And we are live again. Wrestle Curious AEW Dynamite review hosted by myself, Charlie, Big AO, and uh, they did it. They did it. <laughs> AEW did it. Did it. They aired the footage of the incident at AEW All In at Wembley last year between CM Punk and Jack Perry, and it's been the main thing people have been talking about: good, bad, the ugly, the silly. The petty. Um, <laughs> it's been the main topic of conversation. So, of course, that's going to be a big part of the AEW Dynamite review today. But there's a few other things to talk about as well, building to AEW Dynasty and things like that, and all the other like little bit of news things if we've got a bit of time at the end. But, of course, first things first, please like, subscribe, send any super chats. I'm sure a lot of you have got takes about this footage situation, the feud in and out of the ring, all those kind of things. So uh, get your takes in, we'll get them read out. Any questions, anything like that, we'll get uh, we'll get to them as soon as we can. But yeah, hope everyone's doing good. Turn on the post notifications and uh, make sure you like and subscribe. And uh, yeah, hope my fellow co-hosts are doing good. Charlie, what's going on with you today? Doing good. Spent some time with some family. Had a nap and almost overslept. So there was a... Like, I woke up at like quarter to 11 i was like oh shit i've got to go review dynamite now <laughs> but um i'm here i made it and made it. i'm excited to review this episode mainly because i think it's going to be really fucking funny so ready to get to yeah. it interesting interesting episode man to uh yeah. interview some are just calling it outright bad you know <laughs> some are calling it some. um I haven't made my decision quite yet. I'm sure I'll have a better understanding by the time we finish this review, once I've talked out how I feel about everything. But, you know, we'll see when we get to the end. Ayo, uh, yeah, weird episode of Dynamite. But how's, what's going on with you? Yeah, weird episode. Uh, You know, rushed through the door. Got ready to pod. Putting this rest of pure shit on my back, the usual. I saw somebody crying about my mic, yo. Does my mic not sound good? I thought we... uh. Thought we got past all this, this mic it sounds shoot. fine to me. Um, right. I mean, right. it's never it's never studio quality with us, you know. I'm using like Apple iPhone wired mics. I ain't even got AirPods, you know. It's poverty out here, bro. Um, Charlie's got AirPods, but you know, we ain't got mic setups and HD no. cameras. So, it's like, so, people know what it is with us, you know. It's just, yeah. So it we is. fucking so we fucking move, nigga. So we yeah, move. Man, Fix your ears. So I'm not fixing my mic. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's, just, anyway, yeah, it's, interesting. it's not our fault, you know. Um, interesting, interesting episode of Dynamite. Stuff I like, stuff I didn't like. You know, I'm not gonna go back and forth with the cucks in the fucking chat or whatever. But you know, Monty, I see this. I see this. I see this. Oh, like this feeling from like the punk stands in the chat or whatever. Like I don't like that. I just never critique AEW. And maybe you would think that if. You've never fucking listened to a second of our content before, but I say when shit sucks all the fucking time to the point where people feel betrayed by my opinions, bro. I'm going to tell y'all where shit sucked tonight. So, uh, suck my fucking dick, you, uh, you fucking losers, all right? Um, Punk doesn't like you. He's never going to like you. He thinks you're a fucking loser. He tells Ibu you're a fucking loser all the time. It is what it is. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's get into Dynamite. Hitting him where it hurts, you know? You know, before we get into Dynamite, though, you know, we're gonna. I'm gonna pull up some super chats. So keep them coming, people. Cause we're gonna do a quick. Uh, gonna do a quick round of super chats now before we actually get into dynamite itself. So Karan, 100 rupees. Appreciate you as always. So the footage showed an act that Punk already got fired for the build to a match not involving Punk or Perry, and it led to Punk chance. Yikes! Yeah, I don't think it got quite the desired uh, reaction, but obviously mm. we're gonna get to that in quite a bit of depth. Uh, quite short there. Uh, Karan again. Karan. Karan again, 200 rupees. Uh, also, it's incredibly frustrating because until a couple of weeks ago, I was enjoying Dynamite with even the weaker episodes building nicely. This was dog shit. A very weird episode. Uh, and yeah, there's quite, that's been a sentiment a lot of AEW fans because it's just kind of like, what are we doing? Kind of feeling, you know? Um, <laughs> Anjan PN two dollars appreciate you. The list of money, drink it in, man. Um, I said I did say earlier, but my list. I said last night when someone asked what my list will be this week, it was like the top five moments where the crowd was just completely dead during AEW <laughs> Dynamite because there was some. I tweeted it last night, but there was literally like at least like four or five moments last night when bro, the crowd, crowd was, fucking sucked, bro. The crowd was that dead reacting to something. I just laughed out loud, you know. 
Like someone yeah, would hit the pose or sucks. some ox come out and it's nothing. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's it was, brutal, man. I feel for the talent. The... Bro, it was, it was it was over 3k people in our in a smaller venue in fucking West Virginia. Like no, like yeah, it's not gonna sound like fucking MSG and shit, but like we've seen 3k people be one of the best crowds yeah, of the year, yeah, with, like did. fucking Miami and shit before. Like so it was not the number. Like it wasn't they overbooked the fucking basketball arena. They just fucking sucked, bro. It was un- it was unfortunate. It it it. it, it the crowd definitely impacted my enjoyment for a, sh- a show oh, yeah, that was, was up and down quality wise. Yeah, and um, I mean, we'll, I guess we'll talk about this more when we actually review it. But it's like it's the, you want to make it tough as well. Someone who's like really into both companies, especially at the moment, up until like a couple of weeks ago, more so with AW. But um, someone who's into both companies, it is it is kind of tough. Sometimes to go from like WWE at the moment, who are selling like sixteen thousand tickets, fifteen thousand tickets, fourteen thousand tickets. I think they've sold out like fifteen TVs in a row on the road to WrestleMania. To then a crowd like last night with AEW, where it sounds like there's ten people in the building. <laughs> you know, like it is tough. Yeah. Um, not tough. It's just jarring. You know. So um, that is another thing that AEW are going against. I know we've probably, said it a probably few times. Virginia but, alone. <laughs> yeah, uh, appreciate you, Anjan. Uh, Kale, 50 pesos, I believe. Uh, 50. What if it's pesos? What it's pesos, it's pesos. All right, Kale, 50 pesos. Appreciate Yeah, I had some thoughts, but I've decided I'm over this. Shout out, Reservoir. A lot of people are over this, but unfortunately, it's, it's you know, it, it is the subject again, like it was last Monday, you know, and like it was when it was announced over the weekend. So we're going to get through it tonight and we'll see where it goes. You know? <laughs> um, we'll choose them for dollars. Appreciate you. In the world, in the words of a great man, so what do you guys want to talk about? God. Oh, man. Story finished. Well, who's a great man? Oh, come on. The American Nightmare. You know, the American oh, Nightmare. Our world champion. The, the man. Our. The, oh. Our. <laughs> our world champion, you know. I was I was unaware that he uh regained the ten pounds of gold. It's not my world champion. <laughs> Get that shit out of my yeah. fucking face. Call him the bio terrorist. Nah, yeah. <laughs> just, this this is just you can't hate, you know. It just it just it just rolls off your shoulders on a week like this, you know. Who who cannot hate? And also, we're gonna get into. <laughs> We're gonna get into the real Mark Briscoe enjoyers and the fake Mark Briscoe enjoyers. Yeah. Some people enjoy Mark Briscoe for the aesthetic. I'm not gonna point any fingers just yet. But you know, a smile dropped off their face come on, come pretty on, quickly. On, so I think they know who's gonna get come exposed. On, We're gonna get into it later. Listen, I got I got a case. Don't make me I got a brief way and put out a brief case. <laughs> <laughs> Kale, 20 pesos again. Remember, remember Tony is champ, so I'm no longer positive. I'm crying. <laughs> uh, oh, man, bro, man. bro, I saw somebody tweet that this that this thing is going all the way to Wembley, and I'm just like, Oof. that's so crazy. Mercedes isn't getting in the ring until double or nothing, bro. You know, yeah. So, um, and yeah, yeah, yeah. at first when I seen that, I saw that and I like had a visceral reaction. I was like, no, fuck, it's not you fucking idiot. And then I was like, all right, bro, Mercedes not even getting into the ring until double or nothing. She's about to beat, she's about to beat uh, Thunder Rosa. Like nobody else is really like cooking on the undercard, like bubbling up to go to the world championship. Unless the Statlander thing is to put her in the world title picture. But I don't know what's going yeah. on over there. I don't know. I guess we'll see. But... Yeah, Mercedes, Mercedes, Mercedes. That's another dog. Yeah. Yeah, obviously, That's we'll cool. probably spend the most time out of the segments on Dynamo on the footage and mm-hmm. coming out of that. But the Mercedes thing as well, even considering it's such a short segment, I think it's just got, her usage at the moment is definitely a conversation. Um, oh, yes. So, yeah. Um, Hush199, appreciate it as always. I assume with the copywriting, TK regrets this lol. I mean, I'm not a copyright lawyer, so I don't know, but there is a lot of talk that, you know, uh, you can't just put CCTV out there if it's 
been filmed in the UK or whatever. It's different laws and stuff. And Stephen P. knew. Uh, he did a tweet that may have been implying something about that. So it's like, I don't know, but obviously the WWE fans that love to just kind of point and laugh at AEW, they've they ran with that, bro. You know, like, yeah, yeah. like Tony's getting sued, it's the end of AEW, and <laughs> you know, but I'm, I don't know. I don't know. Um, push again, 199, appreciate you. Punk is my favourite for gain more respect, to be honest. Like, there's, there's a lot of people saying, actually. It's not even like a surprise yeah. super chat to get today. Uh, yeah. Dragon Master Adam, two pounds. Appreciate you. Their scapegoat, my savior. <laughs> Many people are saying <laughs> this, bro. Many people are saying this. And Jump PN, two dollars. Appreciate you again. Uh, promotional malpractice. Just kidding. Hashtag we want Joe. Hashtag <laughs> Manor. Yeah, Joe's uh, Joe was like 50 50. Yeah. Um, at press time when, <laughs> when I put the tweet out, but. Unfortunately, he's not going to make it tonight. He's definitely off the cards. Don't want to get anyone too excited because I know he uh, he gets big pops, you know. It's like the Road Warriors. Um, Sean's house bros, $5. More embarrassing, AEW DMCA in their own segment or Chelsea going winless against Burnley Sheffield in a week. <laughs> Thank you, Patch. Um so here's the thing, Shire Town Spurs. Like, the AEW DMC, I think, is absolutely more embarrassing because it's out of character for them now. Whereas mm-hmm. Chelsea, Chelsea Football Club, I just shit now. Like, he's just reality of it, you know? Like, <laughs> us drawing against Burnley and Sheffield is just like, yeah, sounds about normal for a Chelsea fan the past two years. So it is what it is. Patch out. Anyway. And Jan, two dollars. Appreciate you. Respect the EVPs and escape goat. Hashtag release the Snyder Cook. And Jan cooking. Oh my god. The Snyder Cook. <laughs> Jonathan um, Gomez, 199. Appreciate you. Malico Black got a hell of a kick for a scammer. I mean, a lot of Twitter yo, so- today around the Selena Vega just- outfit gear. I don't know. Go, go to hey, bro. These these these, these Alina and Malachi yeah. allegations, are fucking <laughs> hilarious, bro. Just Malachi sitting in a black ass room pretending to be his wife's personal assistant. That's nasty. Post one ninety nine. Is Hook going to the Fed? Question mark. Taz put in the call. Question mark. I don't know, but that is an interesting story. Where somebody the said that. Uh, from, so. Somebody said Essie Scoops reported it, but somebody said they deleted the report. Interesting. The report. I didn't go and verify it, but somebody said they deleted Maybe. it. Well, let's do it. Well, you know, fuck it. Let's do it right now. So, SE Scoops, for those that don't know, they put out a report earlier today saying that Hook is interested in, in exploring his options in free agency once his contract with AEW expires later this year. A source familiar with WWE's recruitment strategy commented, Quote, I can see WWE clearly being interested in him, end quote. So that was SE Scoops earlier on today. And AO saying he's saying something. It is my... they took it down. Interesting. They've took it uh, down. Well, said, oh, Peyton Carter I said think. they took it down. Lo said they took it down. Uh, Kale said it is, in fact, deleted. I've got it up right now on the website. So Interesting. Hmm. Maybe they deleted the tweet. Maybe they did. The yeah, 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 yeah. I, mean, I don't know, but it's on. It's on their front page, bro. Like if you go to scoops.com yeah. it's on their front page, top story, two hours ago. Um. So yeah, we'll get a bit more into that and talk about the possibilities of it. But I just wanted to clear that up before we mm-hmm. talk about a scoop that may have been retracted. You know. <laughs> um. Anyway, uh, Jaden four ninety nine. Appreciate it. My scope got Drew eight hundred and nineteen k yesterday. I speak for everyone when I say Jack Perry clears <laughs> him. <laughs> I mean, some a lot of people say that. A lot of people say the opposite. It's definitely mm-hmm. a divisive one. Ayo's, no one knows how you get down to it. Had me dead. Ayo's, oh, uh, look, we just gonna have to question. First of all, thank you, Jaden. So, we're just gonna have to question a lot of things that Punk said in his life. We're gonna have to question if we were lied to about certain things, about about certain doors that may or may not have been kicked out down about certain. Um, I don't know what else my punk lie about sexual conquests 
I don't know, bro. We're just gonna we're gonna we're just gonna have to bring out the microphone and then with the microscope on Punk's life, bro. Like it, it hates me that I had to do this. I was a huge CM Punk guy. I know it's hard to to believe at this point, but if you if you're the purest OG or even you fall fall my account from the beginning, bro. I was a huge punk guy. But he's just a he's just a lying old fraud, bro. Sad, sad stuff. Sad stuff. <laughs> we'll see. Um, Phantom FTW two pounds. Appreciate you as always. Talk more about Mariah and Mina kissing on the lips. I have things to say about that segment. So. <laughs> Joe Vacci Vassi. Uh, apologies if I got it wrong, but appreciate you one ninety nine. Uh, bruh 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 one ninety nine. Hope Chris Hero had a good day. So God do I. Bless. So do I. Alex Ramirez two dollars. Appreciate you. Punk fans are the Trump supporters of wrestling. Facts. <laughs> no, I'd say Cornet. Cornet supporters are the Trump fans of professional wrestling. It's literally the same. Oh, what is the difference it's between the not it, No, it's not. It's not. It is That's different. But I, I get where you're coming from. Like, it's like a sub. I don't know. Like, it's, what is it's, what is the difference between the fan bases, Monty? There is crossover. Because not what is all, the difference? Not all CM Punk fans are as like... You're not answering. Like, what is the difference? They're not as... What, what's the right wing term for wrestling? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> and I'm not even saying I'm not even saying all CM Punk fans are all Jim Cornette fans. I'm not saying that at all. But y'all act alike, bro. <laughs> y'all literally act exactly alike. <laughs> hey, I'm absolutely this, this fucking do. There's this is crossover, but I wouldn't say all. Like you just said, like, all punk fans definitely aren't Cornette fans, bro. Like because you know. It just it kind of there is it is like a weird one because you know Cornet is uh so like what's the word bigoted you know <laughs> whatever you want to call it you know some will call it old school some will just call him a piece of shit you know it's hey, uh who know who it, knows what you're behind the doors <clears throat> whereas like you know punk has uh he's been more like outspoken about the little guy whether you believe it or not you know so it's. You know, there's there's definitely crossover with the fan bases, but I don't think they're exactly the same. You know, I just say more of a a crossover. You know, um, bro, 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 one ninety nine. The Mercedes angle was sounding crazy. Audio so, engineer did that thing. <laughs> I DM day over immediately, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Mercedes got to chill out. You know, he's, um, like, he's like, yo, it's three AM over here. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing? Hush, you know? Appreciate you again. Feel bad for Swerve, though. I feel like he's been overshadowed with all this petty drama when he should have been, should have had the biggest spotlight. TK got a chill now. I mean, um, I agree with this. Yeah, I kind of, because it's like he had such a big opening of the show, you know? Yeah. And then, like, obviously, you know, just naturally because of what, was put on last night. He he, he watched just overshadowed. Then when he popped up again at the end, it was kind of like, oh yeah, he should have had more on this show, you know. <laughs> like, but you you weren't even thinking about that because of everything that was the craziness of what last night's show was. It's um, important, to, like even on, like forget like just last night in a vacuum, but like, bro, like remember 2019, 2020, like. A lot of the discourse around AW in 2021 and stuff, a lot of discourse by AW was like, where are all the black people on the top of the card? Blah, 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 mm. blah. Some of it was in good faith, some of it was in bad faith, but there was there was a lot of conversations to be had, right? And it's like, bro, he's li- like first black world champion, over his fuck, top merch seller, over in the arenas, great worker. It's not just the fucking what's it called? It's not like affirmative action or whatever the fuck Cornette fans would call it, right? Like, he's going to get crowned next week, bro. Like, this is the guy, the, the fans crowned. Like, he got there on his own merit. It's happening mm-hmm. next week. And we're like, we're not, nobody's even talking about this shit. Like, going into Dynasty tomorrow next. Not, like, because, like, just all this stupid shit, bro. Like, who's talking about the Swerve Joe angle right now, bro? Like, it, and it's it's it, it's dumb. It's it's dumb, bro. Like, shit like that should be driving discourse where you could, like, celebrate AEW and, like, how they've evolved as a company and where they're headed in the future, and not about some fucking psychopathic 50-year-old man who is made out of fucking glass and is on the fucking shelf because of a DDT. He also rolls a little bit. 
<laughs> no, 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 no. Shout out. Shout out, shout out to Drew McIntyre, baby. Been a fan. God bless. Big fan of him as well. Uh, Will Chisholm, $5. Nah, no, you talk but... shit about him in my DMs. <laughs> 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 Will Chisholm, $5. Appreciate you again. Gotta give him a sad disease. She got paid working until double or nothing. I had to believe she's not ready. Yeah, that is definitely the belief amongst... She's, the she's not She's not fucking clear. <laughs> and I feel like they should have just been honest with that, bro. Like, bro. I feel like you could literally just... Bro, like, I just, I just got a couple months left. Bear with me, but I'm I'm here every week. Like, it's, um, I was trying. I can't remember. I might have said this already last week, but like I was saying to Charlie last week, he was like, as to your point, where they could have just been a bit more upfront with it. Like they could have done an injury angle, bro. You know, yeah. They could have. Yeah. Yeah. Like, she got attacked last night. So do they could have done that. Like, they could have done. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, they could have done. Yeah, like get how get the pop of uh, we've got Mercedes Boston big business. She comes out like here I am sort of thing and does her promo the way that she did it. Then obviously in the you know like the week maybe do one more week of that. Then the week after like, on week three have like a big angle with you know what I mean? Because yeah. if she can't wrestle, it's like okay Mercedes isn't cleared. Then the fans can understand that instead of just yeah. wondering she's probably not cleared. Yeah, what's all the filler? When she wrestling, okay. Now we know. Then when it got announced for double or well, not announced when she said she was going to wrestle for the TBS title at double or nothing, is what like, is that going to be the first match? And we didn't know, but we suspected probably, you know, yeah. but we didn't know. Then last night, I think Tony Schiavone like confirmed it. He was like, she's going to make yeah. a debut with double or nothing. And then um, I think I think it's PW Insider fought for Select to probably report it at some point as well. But like, yeah, that is the debut, double or nothing. Uh, but you know, that's not like the told us on TV until last night. So yeah, um, but yeah, God bless her. She's getting paid. <laughs> probably <laughs> a lot of money as well for these mm-hmm. weeks that she's been doing. Not a lot. Joe <laughs> Vachi, um, Ayo, you sound like the guy from SpongeBob who has the pickle stuck under his tongue. Oh, shout out to Bubble Bears. <laughs> is that his name? Yeah, I think. Let me check. Mm-hmm. And then PN, $2. Shining Vega and Tommy Polaris. That's crazy. Say tribute to <laughs> Pay tribute to Sabu. <laughs> this is crazy. Why is Yo, all these, ag- these aggressive Sabu stupid pops jokes? me so much, bro. If crazy. you pay that man a deposit, whatever happens after that is on you. It's on you. Like if you if you lend him some money, you think you're gonna get that bread back. Whatever happens after that, it's on you. Like don't don't come around acting like a fucking victim. Now to be fair, Brett didn't. <laughs> you know, no, no, he did. He did. But well, I think he knew what he was doing, like game. putting yeah. that out there. Because <laughs> yeah. like his fans acted like victims for him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, obviously, he's got to say something in it because he was announced. Well, he doesn't yeah, have his card yeah, subject yeah, yeah. to change, blah, blah, blah. But, like, you know, to be, like, transparent, you know, you you have to like, be like, yo, Sabu won't be showing up tonight. And he yeah. kind of tried to put, like, a light-hearted spin on it, you know? <laughs> like, it just popped him. Like, it popped us. <laughs> but he's actually, <laughs> like, probably a couple grand down now or a couple hundred dollars or... Uh, I don't know how much it costs to get Sabu to get out of his house, but no, clearly know. wasn't enough. <laughs> for the he was there. The he was literally at the hotel. We just didn't come you down. Said for it. Bar, <laughs> you, you saw, saw the hotel. He saw the hotel bar. He saw the hotel bar. I just saw him outside having a cigarette. <laughs> I'm fucking crying. That's hilarious. God, yeah, super. Bro, he had like like fifteen hundred bucks in his pop- pocket, bro. Grand in his pocket. He saw the hotel bar. You know. Decisions had to be made. I can't blame him. Priorities are that age, isn't it? The tribal chief, uh, 499, appreciate it. Perry, with hands on hips, acting casually sassy, no selling punks to my log before it all went down. I could not have imagined it any better. <laughs> I mean, cool <laughs> the, the, word, funniest, the funniest part to me is like just Jack's demeanor the whole time. Just like, it's, I don't fucking know, bro. It's like, it's, it's, 
It's all there is fun. a lot of funny things about the video. There's, there's, there's layers that we're going to get into very shortly. Uh, Jordan Amos, fourth pound, appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, all in footage and all that, but also made death storm at double or nothing. Oh, I say Mariah May versus oh, defeats. Yeah, May, May yeah, Mariah Tony May Storm defeats Tony nothing. Storm at double or nothing. Or what are we doing? Um, God knows. Double or nothing. Um, hmm. Bro, just pull the fucking trigger there, bro. Like, just get yeah, Mariah I'm May gonna... on the card and hopefully Jamie Hayden on the card. Whoever the fuck, like, that's that's good enough. Like, you people already think that Osprey is going to be crowned at all in. We don't need multiple of those moments at the fucking mm-hmm. night, like. Yeah, Great Britain. Mustafa, <laughs> Mustafa, five pounds. Appreciate you. Maturing is understanding that Phil ain't punk rock, but just another bit of greedy wrestler who will do anything to be the top guy. Oh my Sounds god, cool. Mustafa, you're fucking cooking, dragon. <laughs> Sounds sportful to me. I don't know. He's talking that shit. It's quite funny. <laughs> and as the sort of five dollars, appreciate the white on white violence in pro wrestling has been crazy recently. These dogs. Need to get their shit together if they want to succeed. Want to succeed? They weren't raised yeah. right. It's sad. You know what goes on in the communities? Opioid addiction. That's what goes on. In those <laughs> <laughs> Jumanji Hunter, two dollars. Appreciate it. Do you Brits watch the darts? Uh, nah. Occasionally, oh. if my dad's yeah. watching. Yeah, that's fucking the, fuck are the darts. Like Darts, bro. Like, like literally just throwing darts. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People watch that shit on TV. Yeah. Bro, have you not? Se- have you not seen it? Did you not see all the uh, the Luke Littler stuff last year? Yeah, bro, I saw clips year. online, bro. I thought they were just like viral clips online. Like, yeah, they are <laughs> because it's like the thing is with the thing is with darts and why it's so like not yet. It's just guys from fucking darts at a board. Like, it's it's not it's not even a sport, bro. Like, it's, you know what I mean? It's, it's darts, but it's like, bro, the crowd are just a bunch it's, of, like, drunk white people. It's <laughs> it's incredibly just, funny. It's, it's very funny. So, it's First more so, like, the, the atmosphere. I didn't saying, even bro. know. I didn't even, like, bro, like, I, I have so much family in the UK, bro. I've been there. Like, I didn't even know you guys fucking sit there and watch fucking darts, bro. I, I had no clue about this. That's crazy. So it's not something. It's not something I'd watch on the TV, but I'd go to a darts event because it's just like the yeah. atmosphere of the scene is like hilarious. Just yeah. no Americans do anyway. have like dartboards though, mm-hmm. so they're not like extinct over here. But <laughs> they, get big pops. they get big pops, you know. Uh, Huncho four ninety nine. Appreciate it from a strictly. From a strictly and booking slash creative standpoint, TK is no different than Vince, but stands and glazers don't want to admit. Nah, they're, they're, okay, very, bro. they're very different. Okay, bro. But... <laughs> bro, even if you want to say being Vince bad, is better than TK. Being bad doesn't automatically mean Vince. Like Wrestling, yeah. wrestling bookers over the years are like awful in their own unique ways. <laughs> you know, I was kind of touched on this last night on Twitter when we were talking about like WCW 2000 and TNA under Hogan and it was just like they're all unique <laughs> you know it's like when AEW is awful it has their own unique flavour of shit you know and yes. uh that's just it but I don't think Tony Khan even when Tony Khan's terrible it's it's not in a Vince way you know <laughs> like, yeah, like even just strictly like... booking wise like I'm not talking about being, being a pervert or anything like that like just strictly mm-hmm. booking wise like Vince has his own flavour of just garbage you know, so and so does Tony. So that's just bookers for you, brother. Hush one ninety nine. Uh, y'all think AEW perception is back down again? It's not great at the moment. Um, it ping pongs a lot. It could it could have been avoided as well. So I don't think it's like in the mud or anything like that. That's dramatic, but it's definitely like lower than it was it's not October 2023 bro like when fucking when when Dynasty is generational it'll be fucking back and then it'll fucking the fader promotion will hang on every fucking dynamite like it always fucking does because motherfuckers are so hyperbolic on both sides bro like. mm-hmm. bro 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 199 appreciate you again Claudio versus Osprey gonna have me wait make your wings <laughs> Jesus Christ Oh, that's a crazy match just to be able to throw out there. More of this, bro. Oh, yeah. Less of the fucking... Oh, yeah. Less of the other shit. More of this. 
Absolutely. Uh, Huncho 499. Funny the same people who are polluting public discourse with MJF bad takes and trying to run him out the promotion suddenly asking for him to come back. I mean, Huncho, you look okay, bro. Like, are you all right? Like, a... You're having a really bad time in the chat today. Well, I just want to make sure you're okay. <laughs> Thanks for the $5. I haven't really seen anyone talk about Max either way recently. Oh, no, you get off. Oh. Whenever something, whenever something good happens, it's like <laughs> we don't need Max anymore. <laughs> like, it's yeah. Saying, yeah. When something bad happens, it's like you know what, MJF. You know we miss MJF. <laughs> like, I don't, I don't see that. I genuinely don't. What? I see the, I see the, huh, fuck Max shit. But I don't see the damn bro. If only, if only MJF brought it. No, it's not so much like he was he here right now. Me. It was just like MJF could, you know, we could do something good on the show, like that sort of thing. Um, I saw Chris's tweet last night, but that's like the only one I've seen. Yeah. Um, well, so more about it. I'm just trying to catch up on this WWE talent relations stuff because it's all... Uh, 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 Jake, yeah. 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 Super chat. Last night was embarrassing. Tony needs to hand over the book to someone with thicker skin. Vayner <laughs> just want to <laughs> bang his action figures together. Uh... Being a J. Cole Twitter page stand account is fucking crazy. Appreciate the five dollars. Uh J. Cole <laughs> I like to apologize for my previous <laughs> super chat. AEW <laughs> is a huge problem for the wrestling business, and Tony Khan has done an amazing job in this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bro. I don't usually. That was a good fit. <laughs> that, was good. that was a good fit. Oh, that was that was fucking hilarious. Good bit. Thank you for the thank you for the fifteen dollars, yes. Mr. Cole. <laughs> I probably won't be streaming the fall off. I'm sorry, but uh, I hope my I hope my J Cole friend fans enjoy it. Uh, Anna's the Sultan two dollars super chat. Rawling was so baby girl. Oh my god. Uh, there are people that talk like this in real life. There sure is. Yeah, you doodles. <laughs> <laughs> you talk like this in real life. Uh, speaking of which, for human DA, Russ Pierce on backup hangman, five dollars super chat. There are positive things going for AEW. It's up to the company to emphasize them and avoid self-inflicted wounds. I agree. I agree. Yeah. Good take. And with that, <laughs> let's talk about some self-inflicted wounds. We don't normally do we're not yeah. people who watch our AEW Dynamite reviews know we do it in chronological order, you know. But mm-hmm. I'm not doing that today. We're going straight. We're going straight in. We're going straight to AEW show young books <laughs> specifically, showing us the AEW all in backstage for you to the incident between CM Punk and Jack Perry. So um as this as this segment's getting introduced on the show, the sitting out commentary and <laughs> Poor Tony Schiavone, man. <laughs> he's just sat there. Like he looks, he looks pissed. And I know, like it's kind of like a trope that wrestling fans do of like reading too much into people's facial expressions. But pretty much everyone unanimously could tell that Tony Schiavone did not look happy about what was about to be shown. So, um, <laughs> so anyway, we go into the segment, and it's the EVPs, you know, Nick and. Nicholas and Matthew Jackson, uh, the sat down, looking very serious, interview style, multi cam, which I found hilarious. Um, <laughs> and they set the table basically. Um, they talk about how coming up, they're, they're going to be facing FTR at Dynasty in the finals of this AEW tag team tournament. And of course, FTR are the same tag team that they wrestled at AEW All In at Wembley. And they lost. And as uh, all of us remember, um, you know, uh, <laughs> this was the same night that CM Punk and Jack Perry had the incident. And, um, you know, it, it threw them off their game. And, you know, they they just couldn't, they couldn't get the job done properly because they were just so thrown off by what had just transpired backstage with this altercation that they just, they, they couldn't, they, they just couldn't function, Charlie. They couldn't, they couldn't. Mm-hmm. They couldn't be the young books that everyone knows and loves and they lost the match, you know. And um, <laughs> so they're setting the table with this and, you know, this is the angle they're going at, basically, is that like yeah. the, the FTR were the masterminds 
that set CM Punk onto Jack Perry to distract the Young Bucks to have to uh, sort out all these things that were going on backstage, the drama. Um, I think one of them said at one point that there was professional, respectable wrestling journalists that needed answers. Yes. Um, <laughs> that, shit, that, that, that passed me. That, that made me laugh a lot. But, uh, yeah, when, when Nick Jackson is accusing the FTR of being the master plan, masterminds behind this plan of CM Punk attacking Jack Perry. Um, Matt stops him and he's like, wait, you can't just say that. That would be unprofessional to be going onto a public platform and just accusing something that you don't know is true, which is obviously another <laughs> clear shot. At... <laughs> another clear shot at CM Punk. Um, the say CM Punk tried to make the show about himself. Jack Perry, you know, he's just a good California kid. He's been made a scapegoat and he reminds us of what we were like when we were younger, you know, the talking girl mm. there about Jack Perry calling him a scapegoat. Uh, someone once said, if you've got a problem with Jack Perry, you're probably the problem, which of course was uh, something CM Punk said. <laughs> so, um, right, so going into it, the, they've set the table with, you know, putting over Jack Perry, accusing FTR of his master plan, calling CM Punk selfish and trying to make the show about himself. And, um, yeah, there was a few little shots in there as well. And, um, mm -hmm. yeah, they said the incident isn't even the worst part. It just resembles a city school part, school fight, you know. And um, then they show the footage. And the footage was just kind of a lot. I mean, those of you who listen to CM Punk on the MMA Hour, I can understand why, like, a lot of like, the... People who were super CM Punk side are like, oh, well, he was just telling the truth. Because there was a lot of elements of the story he told, but like there definitely was parts of CM Punk embellished. So just to kind of walk through, I'm not going to do like side by side and say CM Punk actually hand this up. But, you know, it starts off and Jack Perry is clearly like backstage after a match and he's just kind of like hanging out backstage. There's so many people backstage as well. Like some other Joes in the corner kind of getting ready for his match. Uh Chris Hero's walking around. There's a bunch of producers and agents. All the guys who are sitting like uh behind the monitors, they're all there. Like there's a lot of people there. There's referees, like all the referees are there. Um there's like 20 people there. Like, there's a mm -hmm. lot of people there. It's not like it was just like a few talent and referees and do you know what I mean? Like there was there was higher ups there, you know what I'm saying? Like Pete, like there was some heavy yeah. there, and there was a mix of everybody just kind of hanging out backstage. So, and then you see like CM Punk coming to screen, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he walks straight up to Jack Perry, and they start talking, and it seems pretty chill. You see, he does seem pretty chill at yeah. first, you know. They're just kind of talking. Obviously, this is you know CCT footage; it's not 4K HD, you know. So, um, and there's no sound either. This is all in silence. You know, they're, they're just kind of talking, going back and forth. You can tell they're going back and forth. Jack Perry's like kind of sorting his hair out as well. And it seems like pretty, you know, not neither of them are like squaring up or anything like that. Or put, or, like, you don't seem like anyone, any of them are shouting or anything. But they're talking and they're talking. And then at a certain point, it gets slightly more animated, I'd say. I've watched it, I've watched it an embarrassing amount of times because I'm <laughs> doing this. Um, <laughs> At a certain point, it does get slightly more animated. And I don't mean they start, like, shouting and pointing in each other's faces, but, like, you can tell that they're kind of... It's just a little bit more, their... like... Yeah. 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 And there's, an in... there's, a, there's a hilarious part in it where CM Punk kind of, like, looks over at Tony, you know? And, <laughs> like... Who knows what he was thinking, you know? But some may mm -hmm. suspect that he was thinking, like, yeah, Yo, what's going on here, you know? But anyway... Yeah. CM Punk kind of looks over at Tony Khan and he carries on talking to Jack Perry. They're talking for a few more seconds and then, you know, CM Punk... Jack Perry doesn't get in his face or anything like that. No. They're already, like, standing next to each other. CM Punk pushes Jack Perry, pushes him again. Jack Perry goes to go for a takedown or something. You know, he gets into CM Punk. CM Punk uh, locks on, like, a guillotine kind of thing. And then everyone else is just, everyone's already in at this point, trying to pull them apart. They get pulled apart. Jack Perry's taken over into the far corner. CM Punk's just taken a few feet away. CM Punk is by Tony Khan, and he immediately, like, basically lunges towards Tony yeah. Khan, like one of the reports said. Like, not lunging as in he dies over the thing, but you can tell he's visibly 
very, it's very like few stars. Out. And he's like, he's just if if the quotes what he said are true, he was just kind of like, "You're a fucking moron. I quit. I knew this would happen. I'm fucking out of here." You know, and you can see him. He's like pointing, and he's fucking and someone that to like drag him away. Yeah. Uh, Jerry Lee, and Chris Hero, those are all pulling away. Sanjay Duck comes into camera. Malachi Black comes into camera. <laughs> <laughs> Some other job, obviously, is just yeah. It was a, uh, it was interesting. It was interesting, but it kind of went like nothing overtly surprising happened, you know. No. Um, Chris Hero looked fucking. <laughs> At it the end of the video, so yeah. at the end of the video, you see him kind of walk off, like after seeing Punk's already gone off camera, and he's just kind of like, oh. God bless Chris Hero, man. We're big fans. But, you yeah. know, we had Malakoi Black walking around in just normal clothes. <laughs> like, <he's> just, <laughs> like, 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 walked in and out of frame. Like, Hook looked absolutely fucking baffled in the corner. Hook, like, yeah, Hook looked back. very confused. <laughs> Did a whole lot of kind of like nothing. Then at the end, he was just kind of like, to Jack Perry. Like, he was just <laughs> Uh, obviously, we wish we, we wish it had audio, but completely understandable. It yeah. didn't. Even if it did have audio, I doubt it would have like the like a microphone right next to Perry and CM Punk yeah. at that time to hear the back and forth between the two. So I guess it's like the main thing that I'd say CM Punk embellished because I think I do genuinely think a lot of the stories pretty accurate kind of in terms of like someone who was involved mm-hmm. telling it the way you'd kind of expect them to. Um, yeah. Jack Perry did not get in CM Punk's space or yeah. as CM Punk, you know, he didn't get in his face. He didn't look threatening. He didn't square up. He didn't push him. He did nothing like that. I don't know if Jack Perry said, do something about it, like CM Punk alleges, you know, yeah. but CM Punk definitely does initiate the physicality. Um he definitely does initiate the physicality without threat of physicality being a, a thing towards him from Jack Perry. Yeah. So that is definitely one of the main things that he embellishes uh, and kind of, uh, you know, lies, uh, exaggerates, whatever you want to talk about. Because like I said, they, they definitely were kind of going back and forth. And there was a moment where it gets slightly more animated, but not to the point where yeah. they're screaming and shouting at each other and stuff like that. Um, I was absolutely fascinated how long they were. I can't believe it. CM Punk yeah. after after what after what happened with Jack Perry with the blatant call out to CM Punk. Like everyone in AEW is not a moron. They know what mm-hmm. Jack Perry did. So when he walks backstage, excuse me, <coughs> when he's just chilling backstage, why was CM Punk allowed to just walk up to Jack Perry and yeah. just talk to him uninterrupted for like a minute? That was no crazy, one, bro. Like no one, yeah. no one even walked with him. And shit, like to make he sure that, like, him. all right, bro, let me let me pretend like I'm just going here to like see what see what Punk wants or whatever. But like, I know I'm gonna step between them immediately if something happens. Like, they just let him fucking walk up to me. Like, I don't. It's crazy to me. Like, you know, people are watching the monitors. Fucking his a bunch of his friends were back there. It back yep. and shit. Um, some of Perry's friends was there. Fucking nobody, nobody that worked at AEW did anything, bro. Like it's just, it was it's just not practice. And you can be like, oh well, you know, they didn't give a fuck about what happened to Jack. It was just like, but did you think that if something did happen to Jack in Gorilla, it would like this would end well for your friend at the time? Mm-hmm. Like no. So Crazy, craziness, um, especially because as I said, there was about like twenty people back there, bro. And I'm not saying like there's just twenty people, as in like you know, wrestlers and undercard guys who you'd kind of expect to be like, should I get involved in? Like, we're talking like there's agents, producers. It was right yeah. in front of Tony Khan's face, bro. Like, like I said, even though I all found it funny, like, CM Punk kind of looked over at Tony at one point, like, yo. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, I just got this mentally ill motherfucker running around without a leash back there and shit. You're surprised when something bad happens. It's, it's like, it's not like, see, the, especially after Brawl Out, bro, like, what yeah, I was going to say, like, there is you a track know? record. Yeah, it's not like here. Fallout like, didn't happen. Like, it's not like Fallout didn't fucking happen. He's letting him just walk up to Jack Perry and just, like, question him or whatever it was. You know what I mean? However that conversation went down between the two of them. But, like, uninterrupted for, like, a minute. No one did anything. It was just wild to me. Anyway, um, I've got a few more takes, but I've been talking for a long time. Charlie, what was your 
reaction when you first saw the video oh. and what was kind of your you take away from just the footage just we're talking yeah. exclusively just about the footage for a minute um i wasn't surprised by anything in the footage i did think it was quite funny that jack was just like constantly playing with his hair like because of people i saw people were just like oh well he had his hands off i was just like yeah he was sorting his hair out like it's very clear that he wasn't trying to do anything with that like I don't know. Like, I don't really have any thoughts on it other than the fact that it's just a really fucking funny video and Chris Hero had an all-time reaction Chris after Hero. it happened. <laughs> like, That's one of my favourite God, parts too. God bless that man. But like, I've watched it so many times just trying to pick out what talent were backstage like at that time. And it's, I don't know, it does kind of make the producers and agents look a bit like shitty because of when you have someone that has a track record in your company, like of being involved in fights, no matter how all out, how brawl out happened or whatever, like when he's going up to someone and it's clearly starting to get a little bit heated, why are you not stepping in already? Like, why are you getting it to a point where he's going to be able to like do something like that? I don't know. I just think it makes him look a bit stupid at that point. But the footage is very, very funny. And if they're going to put it out, I'm kind of glad they did because it is fucking hilarious to watch. So, um, just... yeah, there's a few elements about how we feel about them pointing out. And yeah, stuff, but, yeah, yeah. Ayo, the footage is out. You were, uh, you claim CM Punk is a liar. He is a fraud. He's he a liar. Not a fight, he's not a fighter. He's a fraud. Would you like to elaborate? You know, the thing the is, people? you know, I'm not. First of all. The original that he put, the original thing that he said to fight for, it's fucking like it was all lies, bro. Like, like he said, he said Jack Perry came after him and shit. He said, like, he didn't put his name on it, but we know who put that fucking report out, nigga. Like, who <laughs> fucking? So he said, he said Jack Perry walked up to him, said he lunged at him, like pretty much made. I don't remember. I don't have the report in front of me, but he pretty much made it seem like he had every right to feel threatened and engage. Yeah jack physically even if he might have been the one who started the physicality and we watched the video bro and it's just a five foot nine 100 170 pound kid playing with his fucking hair after his match you know he carried hook to a, to a solid one out there you feel me like you just literally just standing there and you really was being a smug little prick bro like don't you got a fucking match to go wrestle bro, i don't care like bro like, i get it bro i get it Y'all love this mentally ill old man. He gave you so many good memories in the past. You're hoping more are coming down the line, bro. But, like, justifying his behavior at every turn. Oh, it's, oh, it's wrestling. Bro, it's not the 90s anymore. It's not even the two, It's not even the 2000s anymore, bro. Like, nobody's allowed to act like this in the locker room. And, yeah, there, there are fights. There are, there are absolutely fights in AEW and in WWE that, like, we've heard about that nobody no fucking knows about because it didn't make it to the sheets and the people have been able to work together and shit afterwards. But it's just like, bro, like, they're not doing it in front of their boss. They're not doing it in front of 15 agents. If they were, it would hit the sheets. And if they were, these people would be getting suspended. Like, they, they're like, it's... I don't know, bro. Like, y'all, the, the way y'all bend over backwards to, to suck your man, to, to suck up y'all man's is nasty. But that's enough on the punk fans and the uh, punk himself. AEW putting that shit out at this point, at this juncture, it's just like, why? Like, if you were getting ready to bring Jack back and you wanted to get him some, like, company fan sympathy on him, you, you throw him out, you throw that shit out there, you control the narrative and shit, right? But no, nah, they let Punk control the narrative. They let him get his shit out there to his, to his Punk cultists and shit. And then they're, like, playing defense, dropping this shit. Like, Tony Khan, bro, like, you're the biggest CM Punk fan on earth. You was on the message boards posting about this nigga 20 years ago. How did you not know that your cohorts was going to be online? <laughs> this is so fucking beast. Punk is so beast. Oh, my God. Jack Perry's a pussy. Like, how did you not know that's what this, this was going to happen? Like, And you're, you're, like, trying to get heat on the elite. Like, you're trying to get heat on, on the Young Bucks for putting this out there. Right? But it's just like, it's heat with the wrong fucking crowd, bro. The WWE yeah. fans that are crying about this on Twitter, they're not going to the shows. You got people chanting CM Punk and shit. FTR go out there and have the most FTR promo ever segment. Ever. It fucking sucked, bro. Like, it, none of this, like, this did not help the feud. That's why, that's why I said I never need to see 
FTR and the Young Bucks feud ever again. I don't even care how much y'all like the matches. The feuds all fucking mm-hmm. stink, bro. Like, and that they have no out out of ring chemistry at all. And then we're getting this shit. Thank God, Dynasty's happening. Hopefully, all right, we're going two two here. Hopefully, these motherfuckers stay away from each other until they could like actually learn how to do like business with each other or like they get some chemistry. But I never need to see them wrestle again, bro. Yeah. I never need to see them wrestle again. Agreed. Yeah, it's um decisions were made, you know. Decisions were made. They definitely definitely feels like the you know, even the reports have been that like this is kind of this is basically all in reaction to the Ariel Hawani interview that CM Punk did last week and it's just all kind of you know, uh, I don't know man, it's it's tough, but anyway, after after the young but shown the footage just so I can kind of round up the segment before we um before we wrap it up, they were just kind of like this. The fight wasn't even the worst part. The worst part is that we created this huge show. We named this huge show, a biggest show of all time, and we was being distracted by this bullshit basically. And FTR, after they beat us, have the nerve to try and shake our hands. We ain't show you know we ain't shaking your hands, you pair of pricks or something. So like <laughs> Nick Jackson said. Um, but yeah, man, the fo- the footage was like I said, it you know, if we are to believe kind of reports and kind of what the narrative and also kind of a bit of common sense, it's that, you know. CM Punk did his MMA hour interview with Ariel Hawani, and it was very much a you know, his version of a tell all interview of his experience in AEW. And I think regardless of whether you hate CM Punk or not. He definitely did say some things that obviously made AEW and certain people there look a certain way, but it wasn't an interview where he kind of went on there and was just like, Hangman's a fucking idiot, books suck, blah, like it wasn't that tone at all, you know? And I think the person that ended up getting the most shots and coming out of it looking the worst was Tony Khan. Uh, because, yeah. of course, CM Punk talks a lot about Tony Khan's leadership and how things could have been avoided and how he brought up things to Tony Khan's attention. Nothing was done about it. How Tony Khan wanted to do collision and he knew it wouldn't work and not addressing certain things. And obviously, after the fight with Jack Perry, he's, he said, or he, he quoted himself in calling Tony Khan a fucking moron or an idiot and that he quits. And, you know, he was like, Tony Khan's not a businessman. He's a nice guy, blah, blah, blah. And, yeah, I'm not saying Tony Khan was the only person who caught a lick in that interview. But, like I said, coming out of it, in terms of, like, if you had to say who is number one person who received a few licks, it was definitely Tony Khan because, mm-hmm. you know. And, obviously, clearly, Tony Khan felt a way about, I felt a way about it. It, it struck a nerve. It triggered him. It hurt him. It upset him. However you want to frame it, you know, it clearly triggered him in, in some sort of way or another. So he was like, yo, we're going to put out this footage, bro. I'm dropping this footage. So he's gone to the Young Bucks, like, yo, let's drop this footage. And the Young Bucks are like, fuck it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, the way Keller put out a report, uh, well, he was talking on a podcast. It wasn't like a full-on report, but he was saying, like, you know, he heard that like, the Young Bucks didn't really want to do it and it was a kind of idea. And like, that's kind of been yeah. refuted a bit by multiple places now where it's just been kind of like, it was Tony Khan's idea. But the young books weren't like against it or anything. But yeah. at the same time, like it was a Tony Khan idea. I doubt the young books were like banging on Tony's door after the aerial Hawaiian interview. Like, oh, <laughs> we gotta show this, bro. You know. Um, yeah. So, like um, Russell Pierce had a couple sources report back to us on this, and we all got we all heard the same thing. People that asked, it was basically like, the Bucks didn't want to do this. They were concerned about the legalities of doing this. They didn't want to open themselves up to be sued. And then TK was like, oh, no, it'll be fine. Let's just do it. Come on, let's do it. And they were like, all right. Yeah, so, that, you know, like I said, the young bucks start, you know, ah, oh, fuck it. You know, that's what you want to do, TK. <laughs> you know, they weren't like, uh, yeah. whatever. So, that's kind of how I feel about it getting out in the first place. So, it's like Tony Khan's ego or whatever was kind of like hurt or he was upset or he felt a certain way about it, and it was just kind of on him to just uh, be like, this is how I'm going to react, you know? And- uh, TK, TK, bro, I know you haven't been to Tony, uh, not Tony Khan, oh, uh, fucking CM Punk hater long, 
But if somebody who's been somebody who's been flying this flag <laughs> since All Out, brother, the and even somebody who's been a fan of him since the fucking oh whatever's right, like oh nine, bro. Like the if you want to get your revenge back against CM Punk, all you have to do is wait. He'll ruin it for himself eventually, bro. Like you don't have to do anything. Just put on good TV. I promise you, this isn't the last see a mental uh breakdown that CM Punk has in his life. This isn't gonna be the last career ruining blah 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 decision that he ever makes in his life, bro. Like it's it's coming. Don't worry. Just just put on good TV, bro. Like I know you're new to all this, but <laughs> yeah, the the assumption is is that you know Tony Khan was triggered and this was how he felt was his way of getting a shot back. Uh, yeah. But he's he, obviously he's seeing the footage now. It's kind of hard to see that because like him getting his shot back, how by prove by proving that CM Punk embellished the story a bit before Jack Perry not being the person that you know initiated the physicality or um, trying to trying to embarrass him because he doesn't like knock Jack Perry out cold or something. You know what I mean? Like I don't get what. Like, what was it? Like, how was this like some big own on CM Punk? Because as, immediately after it aired, bro, like, literally the worst reaction that Tony Khan could have been hoping for happened. It was like, <laughs> CM Punk cooked him, CM Punk stood on business, CM Punk did this, CM Punk did that. And of course, like, you know, the people who aren't fans of CM Punk were like, <laughs> CM Punk lied about X, Y, and Z. And it was just one of those clips that I think, uh, Ibu mentioned it in his voice note thread that he did yesterday after he watched it. But it was very much one of those clips where it's like, Bro, Ibu made you a, could a use it. no thread about this? He did. It was about three minutes long. It and, you, and you could play? I did. Because I haven't, sp- I, haven't spoke to, I haven't really spoke to him about it. You get me? So Shout out to my nigga. Shout out to my nigga, Ibu. I'm, I'm, not rea- I'm, I'm just saying, like, that's not, that's not very Monty-like I behavior. Ibu posts no thread take. I didn't speak to him about his thoughts on it. So, like, because he was at work. As it was happening, I DM'd him and I was bro, what? Well, I won't say what I DM'd him, but like, I DM'd him. And obviously he knew what was going on sort of thing, but because obviously I'm asleep because of time difference, by the time he gets to work, I woke up this morning and saw what he did, like a fucking voice note thread about it. And I wonder what he had to say about it. But anyway, to a point that he made earlier today, I think that clip, no matter what side of the argument or bias, or even if you're neutral, um, it gave you something to kind of just be like, see, you know, if yeah. you love CM Punk, you could be like, look, cooked him, haha, or whatever. Like, you could, you know, you could exaggerate it and get that out of it if you want to. And I've seen a lot of that. Um, and if you want to make out that CM Punk is a psychopath, insecure, you know what I mean? Why is he? Why is he jumping a twenty-year-old? You had a, You know what I mean? You can do all that as well. Um, so you know, no matter what side of it, you you got something that you can run with out of that clip. But like I said, the main, the main, the main kind of reaction I was seeing was not positive for AEW at all. You know, and uh, what well, I. Uh... <laughs> I mean, I mean, Hook came out. Hook and Samoa Joe came out of it. All right, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Samoa Joe, security guard at your next birthday party. You know, it's yeah. <laughs> booking. You, you know. <laughs> I just go on. I think we could all agree that, like, no matter how much you rate Jack Perry as a wrestler, um, him catching six, seven, eight months. Suspension for this, is, yeah, it was, that's fucking it was crazy. crazy. Like, yeah, that's absurd. It's, it's, like, all right, bro. Like, you like, all right, like, yeah, you're upset that he went into business for himself or whatever and, and said the real glass shit and taking yeah, that. That would all be right, what so you suspended him. him for, not yeah, not yeah. CM Punk attacking him, yeah, <laughs> not, not yeah. CM Punk not being able to control his emotions and getting himself fired. He got himself fired, bro. Like, Jack Perry didn't get him fired. Like, if you want to suspend somebody for going into business for themselves on TV, all in, yeah, send him home for three months, bro. And then push him down the card when he comes back. But, like, then, eight months, like, this is like this is crazy. 
It's uh, and not to your point as well. Though, CM Punk did get himself fired, and you, yeah. you know, obviously, ever since last week, because it was the first time he could publicly like fully admit, he's like he did not want to be there, bro. Like maybe at the start of Collision when he was like, you know, what, I'm here, let's make something of it. Like there definitely was that phase where he didn't want to be there. Yeah. Then he was like, you know what, let's do it, and then he didn't want to be there again, you know. Um, but. As I also said, like there has been like some pushback on people like uh, last night saying like what the fire CM Punk over that like you know and not like, yeah, yeah he's like pushing and shoving and whatnot and they are wrestlers like yeah I've seen some people be like you can't do that in a real like in a real job like yeah but it is a bit different they are wrestlers whatever like yeah it's not the nineties and the eighties anymore but they are wrestlers and they are morons and meatheads do you know what I mean so yeah. there is a bit of leniency there but CM Punk did get himself fired because. I don't, know, I don't know how much it's been reported on or anything, but like, we know that like CM Punk was on like a absolute last chance at that point. Bro, yeah, it was literally in his contract. It was, it, I, I was, it was, it was written into his contract that like you're on your last chance. Any physicality gets you fired. And, like, and he does it in front of his fucking boss, bro. Like, if TK hears that CM Punk and Jack got into it, you know, and they push each other around a little bit. And it was like in the fucking locker room or whatever. Does is Punk fired? Maybe not. Probably not. But he yeah, didn't like fucking brawl out in front of everybody, yeah, bro. Out like doesn't happen or anything like that. And this was just a yeah. And then like, bro, he incident. did brawl out. He was fucking so, like yeah. He probably doesn't get fired, but he was on his yeah. last, last, final written chance. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. It was. He's um. I don't know, man. It was. It was a very weird thing for them to do. And obviously the situation itself was an unfortunate one for AEW, you know. Um, Tony Schiavone, like I said, he looked, oh, he, looked, yes. he looked pissed at the start before they're showing it. When they went back to him, he looked like super deflated and just kind of like, yeah. what have we just done, bro? You know? And again, I hate doing the kind of like, oh, let's super examine this person's face. But with Tony last night at the commentary desk, whilst this segment before and after was like pretty like... You can't ignore it. Like we're not the only podcast yeah. that's talked about it. Do you know what I mean? Like it was, uh, it was crazy. It was crazy. Like Tony, Tony Schiavone. I don't. I think it's. I'm have to go back crazy. and look at that because I, I, I genuinely didn't notice, but I also I saw the clip dynamite the very high. So I need a, the funniest I need a, one I need to go is check. before. <laughs> the funniest one is before because he looked just like what the fuck are we about to do? <laughs> like, yeah. Then after he just kind of looked. Literally got sat with me. You know my Chris like, Hero. <laughs> it's just like, why did we just do that? Um, oh, dude. All right, so that's like the actual footage itself. And I think I'm through. right about where it's going story wise, though. I think that it is going to get us to the um, Christian Copeland Bucks all in match. So you are, you are cooking. This is the direction I'm going now. It's kind of like the point of it and stuff. Um, mm-hmm. Because what I actually want to say about this is that I think, bro, the actual promo itself and the points they made in the promo were good. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like their their grudge and why they feel disgruntled towards FTR, why they didn't shake their hands, uh, why they lost it all in in like their deluded delusional. Yeah. Heel they could have prayed. You know what I'm saying? They should have done all of this without the footage, honestly. That's what they I'm saying, bro. Yeah, it literally, I was with it, like listening to him, like cut the promo, yeah. and it literally didn't need the footage whatsoever. No. Like, I'm not just saying, like, oh, you could have like, changed this line or something, bro. I know AEW already uploaded it on YouTube without the uh, without the footage, but obviously they like talk about the footage about to be shown and mm-hmm. roll the tape, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? But like, literally, like, this. Same promo with the same storytelling beats and everything could have been done literally without the footage. And yep. I think we'd be, all be talking about this segment very differently, you know, yep. because obviously we'd be talking about like the storyline progression from this segment and stuff like that and how, you know, they've weaved it in without being like super like corny about it. But they've also still managed to make themselves look good. Like, like the lines about Jack Perry about like, you know, He's the scapegoat, and he kind of reminds us of the younger us. And like, even like the little petty shots at Punk, with the context, that, say if they didn't use the footage as well, it's like yeah. they were like, you know, they were sly, funny, harmless little digs. Do you know what I mean? Um, 
But then they showed the footage, and it's like the footage didn't even like describe or add anything. Do you know what I'm saying? It's not like they were like, oh, if you if you look, Jack Perry was a victim here, and I don't know, like they could have done like some bits out of it or something yeah. or whatever the fuck. Or say if FTR were in it, they could have been like, see, FTR were there orchestrating it. Or do you know what yeah. I mean? Like they could have you, but they didn't. They just showed us the footage. It had nothing to do really with what. It didn't further anything. It didn't reveal anything in terms of like yeah. kayfabe. Like it was just, you know, we was put off. We was put off on this night, and we blame FTR for it. And like, here's the fight that happened. Like, not it didn't. Yeah. It didn't prove anything. You know what I mean? It didn't amount to anything. The actual footage. Then I think as I kind of touched on loosely, like dynamic wise, heel face was, it's completely confused the crowd. And I think yeah. that was kind of evident with the angle that they did with them later on, like. Because it literally doesn't make sense. <laughs> like, because the a- if you're the AEW faithful, AEW fan, Tony Khan, AEW locker room or anything, like, in theory, you basically agree with the Young Bucks. You know, CM Punk was selfish. He shouldn't have done mm-hmm. that. He tried to take away from the biggest event. Yada, yada, yada. Obviously, you know, that isn't, obviously that isn't what the fans are thinking. Oh, that's why the books last. You know, obviously that's clear yeah. KFA. But like, that is kind of like the narrative, the AEW, pro AEW side narrative. But they're the heels. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, so it's like, and then FTR, who are being framed as friends with the bad guy, the big mean bad guy, they're the baby faces who are now, who then go out and do a promo like, oh, you know, we want AEW to be a bit. So the crowd, look, what the, the crowd don't know what to do with it. Yeah, <laughs> so it's, like, it's a like, really weird dynamic. It's 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 dumb. Like it's super dumb in that sense. Like it, it's the crowd's just confused and it literally don't make sense. Um, reaction as I've already said was not desired at all. Um, one thing I've not seen anyone talk about, and I know I'm kind of talk waffling and waffling a bit now. I know there's been reporting about like this was Tony Khan's idea. The books were cool with it. Obviously, CM Punk wasn't asked about it, but like, I've not seen anyone t- tweet or report that, like, does any what did Jack Perry approve this? You know, like, did Jack? I no oh, you know, isn't he the, I, top, I don't know. the top of the list of people who wouldn't want this out? Yeah, you know I wouldn't, I, mean? I wouldn't. Like, but, um, I what I forgot to add into like what Russell Pierce heard, um, we also heard that like the Bucks like finally agreed to do it when they were like. Yo, if this can be used to bring Jack Perry back into AEW, fuck, fuck, we'll do it. So, I don't know if you approved or disapproved, but I'm sure he's going to be happy to be able to move home and be on fucking TV again. Mm-hmm. Speaking of which, so back, back months, the, the scapegoat. The scapegoat, Jack Perry, is the top seller in New Japan, yeah. pro wrestling, my it precious sure Shin Nihon. Monty, how do you feel about that? How do I feel about Jack Perry? How do you feel about that, Monty? How do you feel about that news? Oh, I, I, I wish I could give you like give you something right now, but like I, 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 tr- <laughs> I truly don't care. Like, <laughs> you're so mad. Yes, yes, so mad. The scapegoat is just, it's just, it's just drawing, drawing we fans and this. selling we out t-shirts. Live, the scapegoat. I didn't, I didn't talk to you about anything before we went live. The scapegoat t-shirt is signed and sold out in all sizes, every single size, Monty. Uh. Child small, child's medium, child's large, <laughs> adult small, adult's Go medium, on. adult's large, extra large, double extra large, triple extra large, quadruple extra large, six double extra large for the CM Punk right, fans. Right. They're all gone. <laughs> and, it just, and it just it just keeps you up at night in your tear-soaked pillow, knowing that the scapegoat's over as fuck. You're so mad about it, Monty. You know who the real winners here are? It's fucking House of Torture because their merch is the top seller nah, right now because that's the faction he's in. Yeah, <laughs> they're making that's bank one, off that's this. An positive, you know. And now, now Ghetto's gonna look at this and be like, "Hey, man, we gotta let's keep like, pushing these guys. Yeah. Look how over they are begging Tony Khan to keep Perry, so we can't even bring <laughs> yeah. him back." Right? It's like, <laughs> come on, bro, let us get Evil involved in this storyline. Like, for fuck's sake. I would, I'd like to, I'd like to think. The the naive benefit of the doubt giving fan side of me is trying to believe that when 
the young books were kind of negotiating like the idea of doing it of like yeah we'll do it if Jack Perry can come back Jack Perry mm. was like looped in at that point of yeah. like yo yeah. like whether it was Matt or Nick like yo bro we're gonna do this angle would you be cool if we showed the footage but we're going to bring you back and you're going to be working with us for the next six months or whatever the fuck. You know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. But if they've just, like... <laughs> if they've just dropped I'm Jack just... Perry getting fucking put in a headlock, like, that's crazy, you know? Um, I think I think a positive to this whole thing is, right? And, like, there's not many. But one of the positives to this whole thing is <laughs> Jack Perry has the opportunity to come back and have a second chance at this run that he's having, bro, because like yeah. I I liked the matches, but it's just like the TV he was putting on, bro. Like yeah, it was before like the promos and shit. And like I don't think that it was like all time bad shit like Monty did, bro. But like that shit wasn't good. Like it wasn't it was good. You so couldn't bad. like what do you what so like what like like Monty, what do you do with him after after all in, bro? Like if he doesn't get the second chance. So I think I think this is good. I feel like he should have took acting lessons at, on his time off. I don't, I'm not. I don't know if he did or if he didn't, but he's definitely a better promo now than he was when he left. And I'm not saying he's fucking. I'm not saying he's Roddy Piper or anything now, but I I think it's more than serviceable. And if he could if he could cut these promos that he's cutting in the New Japan backstage in a ring, and then keep up the work rate, I think we got something there. But we're, we're gonna have to see for translates to TV. Man. I most I, I do mostly agree, but my thing is is just like again, it's like they could have done all this without the footage. You know? Yeah. Like, yeah, where yeah. do you go with Jack Perry after all in? Like that is a very valid thing to bring up. But you could just be like, well, they could just bring him back with the young books now, like they're assumably going to, but without showing the footage. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like you can still put him in the uh, goal. You can still I do meant, this. I meant off of like his booking. Like because like you did the whole thing. And it's just like you, you can't really send him off the card because like the quality of TV that he was putting on. I right, like where do you where do you bring him back? It's just like what what do you, what oh, yeah, do you want yeah. him to he work on the to card and stuff like he definitely had to go away. Like the different even if even if the same point thing didn't happen, that to go back to the drawing board because yeah. as I just mentioned for me, I thought they were putting out some god awful TV with Jack Perry as a heel. Oops. Um I mean, like it affected his in ring as well. Like he's still a good worker and stuff. Um, he don't really have many good matches at the moment, but obviously House of Torture and shit. You know, it, he's what yeah. it is. But um, <laughs> he was such a good baby face underneath worker. You know. Um, but yeah, so like when you strip that away from him and make him just kind of like nothing really special about him in ring, and then he's doing terrible gimmick stuff as a heel <laughs> like it's yeah, I thought it was awful bro um but anyway like so they yeah, just did not they didn't need to escape though <laughs> this is better you know um they just didn't need to show that footage they just didn't need to it was just kind of like Tony Khan trying to get his shot back in yeah it was petty you know what I mean I know that has been like the cafe thing that the books have been going with like EV petties and stuff like that and but it was just like immensely petty and didn't really help anyone. You know, it's like AO just said, like, yeah, you can say that it helped Perry in a way because it's like what has like, brought him to the forefront again and thing. But like, they could have still done that without the footage. <laughs> like the actual footage didn't, the actual footage in a vacuum as itself, just more bad than good came from it because the reaction was so bad from an AEW point of view. To the point that they were they were copyright striking DMCA. I don't even know what the actual terms called, like, but they were like deleting. Oh, cop- it's clips. copy striker DMCA. Yeah. When they were deleting, like, they were taking down people, clipping the uh, the incident and stuff, which AEW does not do a lot. Like that that says a lot to me as someone who obviously like uses a lot of clips and stuff because, like, like I said, AEW never does that, bro. Like they let people just post their clips and stuff. The one of the most prominent times I remember them doing it. Was the exploding barbed wire death match when people were posting uh, the explosion like lol? Like after about an hour, they started striking them down. So, um, you know, <laughs> based off their track record, they only do that when there's something they don't want people seeing out there. So, if that is the bro, case, I, why put it on TV in the first place? Fucking, I, 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 bro, I, I have to speak on this shit, bro, because if I like, 
copyright straight copy striking your own fan base because they a lot of them put it up like i got fucking copy stricken bro like my main account did and like i, I put i'm gonna put out a counter claim it's probably gonna win but it's like it's so fucking it's pathetic bro stop doing this shit you're gonna cost people their fucking accounts all they do is hype up aw and shit if you didn't want it out there then don't fucking put it out there you had you had yeah. months and months and months and months and months and months and months to think about this shit you knew what this was forever ago like you weren't surprised at the same time we are and you were just like yo whatever's on there just put it out no bro it's just like it's, it's pathetic in my opinion you shouldn't be doing that shit. it's a misuse of the system people that think tk is gonna get sued or go to jail you're a fucking idiot um or like corporations copy been too. Uh, they they uh what's it called they copy strike people all the time wrongfully it just is what it is like um it's uh it's it's it's, it's sad bro it's sad don't do that shit. yeah especially with aw being so like social media influenced you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think obviously I think that in itself, like they only do it when they, it's pretty clear they don't want something being reposted out there, and usually that means they've made a mistake. But like they did with the explode <laughs> with the exploding barbed wire. They saw how that oh, no, came well, off well, and knew it was the embarrassing. Thing is, <laughs> AW pay per views they usually always. Like they usually always get your clips out of there eventually. I'm more surprised they're not pay per view. Eventually. Like, but that's like, yeah, within like the next day, not within like an hour, like within the next like forty eight hours, like they'll, they'll typically it starts in like twelve ish hours. They'll they'll get you shit out of there. But um, AWTV, bro, like normally they just let you post whatever the fuck you want, and it's fine. I still use a DMCA account just in case, like for instance, yeah. like last night, and I did it last night, and I still somehow got a DMCA strike on my main. I don't fucking know how that happened, but um. Yeah, I, I think I think copyright striking TV, free TV is pathetic. I don't care who does it. Like, I don't care if it's fucking AEW or fucking like A and E. WWE don't copyright strike it. WWE are not super loose with it, bro. <laughs> yeah, bro, they let you post whatever. People post <laughs> entire matches and it's pretty it's usually fine from like manias. And it's fine. I saw someone post uh I saw someone post like the whole WrestleMania Night Two main event, like an hour after it happened. <laughs> like, yeah. Um. So yeah, it's um, it's just not been the reaction that they've wanted, and it's been pretty clear, to be honest. And um, you know, there's been kind of reporting on the reaction since about kind of like talent being frustrated that it was put out, frustrated from the moment that they knew it was going out. Um, some talent are uh, like you know at least it helped Jack Perry and bring mm. you know it brings up some hype for him to come back. Um, there was a there was another side of talent. I think this was in the thoughtful select report that was just kind of like you know it's a shame and this time could be used for someone else. Um, so yeah, just kind of like a mixed bag of reactions, you know. I got a couple yeah. of reactions. It was just uh. They didn't think it was the biggest deal in the world, but they were kind of they were kind of frustrated. They just thought it was dumb. They just thought it doesn't, mm-hmm. this doesn't yeah. really help AEW. Like, oh yeah, because it just you know don't <laughs> it did not help AEW. Um, I mean, they got top three best demo rating of uh, of the year for AEW Dynamite, but yeah. you know eight hundred and nineteen k. Total average viewership. It's not like it, it's not like the rating was like, <laughs> see, <laughs> you know, it was like there was a there was a little there was no a little what. jump, yeah. a point a point three oh. That's like that's. I mean, that's, they were they were they were number though. three in the fucking night, like their number like their number three in the night every mm-hmm. week that NBA basketball dominates cable television. So, mm-hmm. it's a uh, man, man, oh man. Um, all right, so the Young Bucks countdown did make me laugh, though. That was a funny bit. Yeah, that, that, was, was, that, was, that was fucking was hilarious. Quite funny. And it's I, I, countdown to the Young YouTube. Bucks came off looking. The Young Bucks did a did good business here, bro. It's just a yeah. shame that they were given nonsense to work with. I I, I really love this EVP gimmick, bro. And I and I, and I feel like yeah. just like them using Punk's exact words and being like, "Do you know how ridiculous this sounds if someone says this out loud and says it about you?" But like, this is how your brain works. And you process things and you say about us, and that's stupid, right? Like you hear 
sounding mm-hmm. stupid coming out of my mouth. I love that. I love that gimmick, bro. But then just like the video is just like. It yeah. is what it is. It's, it's been a. It's been an interesting. It's been interesting. Yeah, if, like 19 old. Super Chats, Monty. I know. Yeah. But... Got build up. Okay, I think I think we I think we're kind of like winding down on just the footage thing anyway, and we can actually. Yeah. Uh... Oh, we'll talk about it naturally through these super chats. So let's dive into them. Uh, R Curtis seven 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 four nine nine four ninety nine. Appreciate you. Yeah, my brother barely watches wrestling, and we're sending WrestlePurist Twitter links because of Big Punk. The power is back. <laughs> Big Punk is crazy. I do appreciate you saying Punk though. <laughs> We'll choose them for others. What happened to Adam Cole's faction? Tony just said, I have up until Max comes back. P.S. We need Drew to pray for Jay White. Um, I think it's pretty oh, clear. Like this whole Undisputed Kingdom thing was more of an MJF driven thing than a Tony Khan driven yeah. thing. And then Adam Cole still being injured doesn't help. It's it tough, hey, man. bro. And the, the person they were formed to the feud with is gone. Yeah, it's um, tough. It's uh, they they getting shit on from all sides right now. Yeah, it's pretty right. It's I'm sure they'll have a collision present, so it's super unfortunate for them, man. Because obviously, like they were brought in as like the main event heel faction to work mm-hmm. with the main, the top babyface in the company, and um, you know, then the main, the person, the only person in the group who like gives the group like validity as a main event, Adam Cole gets his ankle fucking explodes. Like, yeah. um, MJF then takes time off because he's got all these bumps and bruises and he's injured and you know then you're left with fucking Wardlow I like, know I don't even like hate on Wardlow bro but like you left with I know this one this one I'm prefacing because I know a lot a lot of us do a lot of us do and a lot of us are very very critical of him and I have think shit um, I have uh, I've been, I've been I agree. critical of him I've, I've been very critical of him and I've praised him at times as well, but like at the same time, I don't hate Wardlow. But again, you're left with like a main event heel faction that's just got Wardlow, the kingdom. Like, again, I like the kingdom, but come on, bro. And obviously, um, Roddy, like, I love Roddy to pieces. Anyone who's watched any of like, my content knows how much I love Roderick Strong as a wrestler, bro. But he can't carry a heel faction to the main event, you know, yeah. <laughs> because he can have all the five star matches he wants. It ain't happening, you know. Um, it's not even allowed to have those at the moment. It's not fucking wrestling. Yeah, that's what I was gonna get to literally, and it's like and that's the biggest shame for me. So like, yeah, I can kind of forgive him not being like a big deal. Do you know what I mean? Of course, look, like, because situation has just led to that. But yeah, Roderick Strong not being able to cook with the international belt when. Every t- every like week, I feel like is he injured, and then he gets booked for like some bullshit, you know? Yeah. <laughs> just like, <laughs> just let him cook with the international belt yeah, the man. exact same way that Orange was. The exact same. Just let him do the same thing, but as a heel, as in, just let him wrestle yeah. like, most weeks yeah. on TV against someone good. Not like. And then if you're like, if you're like, yo, Roddy Strong, fifteen minutes every week doesn't really drive a number. I don't love it. Oh, the collision. Rating is the collision rating, no matter what you put on their television. Yeah, just do it there. Look, for being for being like real, like the AEW rating on Dynamite Collision, like it pretty much is what it is. Like there yeah, isn't it like, there isn't any huge, there isn't many. Like there is people who people tune out for, and you know, you can make whatever agendas you want out of that if you're one of the people who closely looks at the ratings and looks at who draws what. Um, but in terms of like stuff like that, bro, it's like no, nothing makes a staggering difference. Like, to the no point one, where you're just no, like, yeah, I, can't, yeah, yeah. I gotta like mm-hmm. do this to my TV, do that to my TV, do this. Yeah, yeah I, definitely. I, like, I no, like, no one, no one in the company, I don't think, is either drawing enough or tanking enough to the point where it's like, all right, I need to alter my show for this. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, like, yeah, the building things, and there's people who do draw a little bit, but like I said, none of it's like significant to the point where it's like. Oh, we can't have Roddy on the show and defend against Matt Seidel because, you know, it's going to tank 500k view. Like, that's not going to happen. I know that was an extreme, extreme number to yeah. use as an example. But... Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, Will. I don't know. Um, I don't know. We do, get, uh, we do get Roddy versus Seidel, right? And then on Rampage. And then I think you guys announced so. Battle of the Belts or something. I don't and, yeah, but he's had... 
you know. But I'm interested in like real. I love Sawadell as well, but like, and I was really happy to see him get really? that match. But it's like I remember yeah. wrestling like TV regulars and shit like all yeah. the time, like every week. Yeah, he killed, every, he killed the every, fucking mid card. Every, Anybody that wasn't in the main event, they had to uh, they had to lay on their back for Orange Cassidy at one point in the international title run. And Jean Pian, two dollars. Appreciate it. FTR. F the Republicans. Hashtag Omega Crats. Hashtag Perry for twenty twenty four. You are going crazy today, bro. And Jean talking his shit, bro. He talking his shit. He's all heart. Nine ninety nine. Appreciate you as always. I don't get the doom. It adds. It adds a story to the tag titles beyond. It's the fourth time these guys are going to try and epi and bring Jack back while giving us an all time Chris Hero reaction. Totally fine. I mean. I definitely disagree in the fact of, like, oh, what, what's the... It's not... There's definitely been overreaction of, like, oh, this company's over, bro. You know, like, mm-hmm. as happens all the time with AEW, there's so much, uh, we're so back, it's so over, like, company, you know? Um, they just are. That's just how their fan base are. I think that's probably one of the big disadvantages of being, like, such a social media conscious company, you know? Um so yeah, there's I don't get the absolute doom saying he's all heart, but going the complete opposite end of like <laughs> it's totally fine is again, I don't agree. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, I, I I I I do I think giving people these negative talking points when you're a company like AW, it's never like a good thing. But it's fine, bro. Like if Dynasty's great, they keep putting on good TV. We're not we're not talking about this shit in a fucking month, bro. Like but um, yeah. I don't know, man. I think I think I think it is like quite terrible to be honest, because it's like you're giving you're giving people the ammo as you mentioned as well. It's like you the company comes off from the footage not good at all. You know, it's like we talked about like there's so much management there and stuff like that. So like the company as a whole looks incompetent from the footage. You know, um, CM Punk was not embarrassed or anything like that if any like his name got chanted later on in the show you know and ultimately it distracted from what we should be talking about which is mentioned here in the sense of like yeah it did add these things to the story and it did this and it did that as in the segment as a whole not the actual footage but it's like all we're talking about is the footage bro do you know what i mean when we could be talking about like how much this has made us want to watch the dog as if they've actually found a way to make me interested in Young Bucks and FTR again outside of it'll be a four-star match. Do you know what I mean? Um, mm-hmm. But instead of that, we're just talking about, like, should they, should they, shouldn't they have done this? Is Tony Petty, or is it the Young Bucks' fault? Did they want to do it or not? Like, that's what all the conversation has been. It hasn't been, like... So, you know, it's um, it's just not, it's just not good. And, again, it just shows, like, it's just not a good move from Tony Khan in terms of how it reflects what he's like as a, you know, as a leader, as a head of a company, and someone who's just going to kind of like, I don't want to say shoehorn, because again, the books did agree to do this, you know, but like kind of just be like, all right, this is what we're doing, you know, (laughs) and it's shit like this, you know, just so I can get my, just so I can get my shot back on punk for what he said to Ariel Hawani on a podcast. Like it's so Doing it two days before Jack Perry wrestles in Chicago as well was definitely a choice, but. I mean, he's the fucking heel, and he's going up against the oh, yeah. race. So he's it's good. Right, I think, I think, I think, as far he's as Jack like Perry he, and New right, Japan yeah. and all that, like this is this is great, bro. Because like he has the opportunity to have a career defining performance tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Whether if it gets the time for that, and if like Shota and Jack Perry live up to that, that's on them. I don't, I fucking love yeah. Shota Umino. I I rate him extremely highly. I think he is the future of New Japan for us, and him and Yoda hmm. Suji. So I, I definitely has the ability to I rate Jungle Boy highly, but we'll see we'll see if it happens. But um, I I really think he has he has the opportunity to have a career defining performance some more. I hope he does. Me too. I, I, yeah, I genuinely have my fingers. I genuinely have my fingers crossed for him on that man. Um, because <laughs> he he needs it, bro. You yeah. know, like there's a window now. Look, wrestling's all about windows and whether you can go through them or not. And sometimes they close and we talk about what if this person got pushed or to pull the trigger on or, you know, maybe like, whether that's fucking, you know, Keith Lee or Wardlow, you know, who we was just talking about. You know, there's windows in wrestling and, you know, 
just talk about the example with those two I just mentioned, like, their windows are closed at the moment. Wardlow's young enough where he could come back. Keith Lee, unfortunately. Well, you know. It's, oh, he's Keith young. Lee. No, but I'm just saying he's, he's young enough, though, and he? Like, Wardlow yeah, is yeah, young yeah, enough yeah. where, like, he, he some, something weird yeah. could happen. Yeah. You know? He just comes like, over and probably, like, yeah. he, he could, like, I don't know, he could knock out Chris Jericho backstage. And then run the <laughs> <game>. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Like, I mean. Um... <laughs> <laughs> but rest is all about windows, man. And Jack Perry's definitely got a window now where people are talking about him. People, more people are going to be interested in him. This Windy City yeah. White show is a big one in terms of like mm-hmm. the AEW fans are going to be watching this one. Yeah. You know, there's opportunity yeah. for for everybody to go see, see, see. Jack, Jack's great. He's only twenty five. See, see, see. Like he has the opportunity tomorrow. I hope it works out. Yeah, short time Spurs mentioned what we were talking about earlier with five dollars. Appreciate him. Uh, biggest question I have is why was Jack Perry suspended, let alone being in TK's doghouse for seven? Uh, he, he was it's told you crazy, bro. Literally, literally forgetting punk five for quote unquote getting punk five. Like TK's just mad at him. Like the punishment doesn't fit the crime. TK's just mad. No, it's um, it's wild, man. It's wild. Um, it's really is. But he's coming back. He's coming back. And like I just said, hopefully he's got a window that he can take advantage of with his comeback run. Because I think he's he's been given a chance, you know, with his EVP shit that he's assumably going to be involved with. Master 84, 189, appreciate it. WWF wanted to book Piper versus OJ at WrestleMania 12. Look it up. Charlie, yeah. Hall of Fame football player, Orenthal James Simpson, mm-hmm. was found dead. This morning, uh, rush for 2000 yards in 14 games, something that's never happened before or since, um, in the US USC ring of honor, um, million pro bowls, um, went back to, went to the super bowl a million times with Jim Kelly, you know, he, he passed away. How do you feel about this? Why are you doing this? What do you, what do you mean? Why do, why do you want me to give an opinion on this? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll come back to you. Monty. How do you feel about the death of of uh, OJ Simpson? Um, I had a similar reaction to Jordan Patu, our friend. It was like when I saw that he died. One of the first things that came to mind was like the day he came back to Twitter. Like the day he signed up to Twitter, and everyone was like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, that was that was fucking hilarious. <laughs> um. But yeah, I don't have much. He also beat a uh, double murder case. <laughs> he did. He got a uh, well. He got yeah. adult, no. He got um acquitted. acquitted. He got acquitted. Yeah, he got acquitted. He got acquitted. he got acquitted. He did get acquitted. <laughs> I actually don't know. Look, I know the basic bullet points. Do mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like, I know the basic. The glove didn't fit. How much divide it caused in the country. How big. But I don't like. I've never watched the documentary. I've never watched the series on it. Me neither. Um, like I've not. No, I'm really not educated on it. But um, you know, when I did find that day hilarious when he was fucking signed up to Twitter and the reaction stuff. Anyway, he has passed away. He has passed away. <laughs> Ayo, if Perry bitch pong, you'd have different tone. Come on. Yes, if if facts were different, <laughs> I would have a different reaction. <laughs> <laughs> what? Like, yes, if. if... <laughs> if, if the facts were different, I would react differently. What, what, what kind of got you is this? <laughs> Scott, 279, appreciate it. That didn't make me more excited for their match. Yeah, so the actual footage, do you know what I mean? Like, it didn't, it did nothing. <laughs> I did nothing, bro. The promo before and after and shit, yeah. But like, FTR could have even done the same promo after. Like, why are you still going on about this instead of saying, like, why did you show this? But, Whatever the fuck, man. Jaden four ninety nine. The elite should have stopped being soft for a second. Jump punk once he did that all in. Punk should have pressed. My... Punk should have pressed my goat hangman like he did Jack. The elite. Uh, the elite are aren't are in business the footage, bro. You said what? What'd you say, Marty? I said the, the the elite aren't even in the footage, are they? Yeah, I, I, I didn't know if they were. Well, I've not watched this like Zabruder film. I watched it twice. I watched um... it on TV and then I watched it again on the timeline, and I was like, oh, okay. I watched it a few times, and it does look like Matt sat at the production table with Tony, but I can't tell if it is him or not. So, 
Don't Charlie, take that take that with a grain of salt. It Charlie looked like guessing, that, but I'm not sure. Charlie guessing off Matt Jackson's complexion on his wrist or something. <laughs> no, <laughs> like, there was just like an angle I caught his face. I was just like, is that Matt? I can't tell. I'm not saying it is. I don't know. It just did look like him. Jumanji Hunter, $2. How can Jack look good when he can't get his W by? I mean, he, you know. He, he can look good he, by having, by he's a hero, moving on he? and having a good career. No, but the thing is, so even in this context, it's like they're being, like, with the type of archetype of heels that they're being, like, him coming back of being, like, the little shit, like, it makes sense. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, um, again, it's just a shame that they felt the need that they had to show the footage to get, like, a leak back on fucking CM Punk's interview because they could have done all this and made Jack look important again without showing the actual footage of him fighting with Sam Punk. Hush five dollars. Pretty certain TK was really hurt by having to fire Punk and then him showing up in at Survivor Series just probably added unnecessary months to Perry's suspension. Oh well, yeah, remember in that report where it was like, you know, Perry was in talks about coming back and then <laughs> then <laughs> Tony just ghosted him after <laughs> seeing Punk David at Survivor Series. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> oh TK man what are you like mate Ron 499 appreciate you I think that's what I said I don't know about the laws in the UK but yeah. in America the land of the free and the home of the brave what that fog Phil did to Jack Perry is called assault uh, SRS reported that Jack Perry absolutely could have gotten punk arrested if he wanted to but it's wrestling mm-hmm vernacular <laughs> one not you know and appreciate it the law definitely adds to punk versus joe in retrospect i mean yeah that that, that match at wembley is like, it's gonna be taught it makes his while. entrance yeah. 10 times funnier because he comes out looking so fucking smug he does he does um which isn't for dollars appreciate when they came back from the tape tony's face was having flashbacks to hall nash and hogan killing the vc <laughs> I've seen a lot of people talking finger poker doom and shit. So oh, WCW two thousand, a lot of extreme examples. Um, Will choose and five dollars. Can we please see the tape of Eddie Kingston and Andrade slappy Sammy Guevara? <laughs> the Andrade one, the Andrade one. I want to, I want to see the footage of it, but filmed like total divas. You know, yeah, like he, him getting ready for work at his house and. Him like Tony can't get him getting a call from Tony Khan and him being like, nah, Tony, I promise you, I'm not, I'm not gonna do it, bro. You know, mm-hmm. you know, I've got my problems with Sammy. I'm gonna behave myself. <laughs> him showing up, him pulling up to work and people like getting all wary and uh, him getting out the car like, yo, where's Sammy? <laughs> like, <laughs> I hate to burst everybody's bubble, but the you Andrade know, incident was in the locker room. There's no tape. Uh, I don't know. Maybe they, they, the Eddie Kingston shit was in Gorilla though. Maybe, maybe that's on film somewhere. Uh, yeah, it was after that promo. But even that, he didn't even he didn't even hit him, bro. He just like pie face, pie face, Sammy. Yeah, so it's just like it's not very interesting. I don't think. Start a math. Well, no, no, no. I appreciate you. Feel like the Ariel Hawani interview is where TK's punk stardom finally turned into hate spite. But before that, it felt like he still loved slash miss punk. That quote, not running a real business, long cut deep long. I was like, Tony Khan was definitely the person who caught the most shots from that interview, bro. Was like, you know, I doubt Nick or Matt Jackson saw heard anything in that interview where they were like, "Oh, you know, <laughs> yeah." That's what I mean. Like, it was mainly Tony, yeah. bro. It was mainly Tony that he got buried basically in that in that interview. And again, like, of course, he obviously said things about other people as well. You know what I mean? But you know, in terms of the main, you know. Tony came out not looking great. <laughs> and he, he didn't come out of last night looking great either, so no. it's not great. Um Kaden, much appreciated Kaden, member of the fam. 199 says, I'll be in Chicago tomorrow and Dynasty next weekend. You go oh, everywhere. Enjoy, enjoy the shows. Enjoy the shows. Yeah, no, enjoy. don't enjoy the shows. I'm sick, I'm sick <laughs> of Kaden. He's coming in here and be like, <laughs> I'm gonna be at this pay per view, you know. Every pay per view. Is, is Kaden is gonna Kaden is Kaden gonna give us a a, a press scrum presence? 
a dynasty or are they just you know being fucking just a, just a lazy he will mark? be yes that was oh, okay, okay, okay. He did, he did i'm sorry for, for insinuating that you could ever be a lazy he did a fall for his dynasty man. credentials through uh through wrestle fury so he will be repping us there um, happy days gonna get into asking him tony <laughs> i'm gonna get into ask tony calm why <laughs> just why tony he's like oh well you know i think that uh you've been putting on a great a string of great tvs and you know the numbers have been strong <laughs> in, in the top three every single week on dynamite and the collision ratings are really strong and our relationship with warner brothers discovery has never been stronger and we're in uh position for a huge rights increase so yes that is a great question uh katie uh that is why <laughs> <laughs> word for word bar for bar god bless Twitter the process 34 499 appreciate it tony khan too chronically online and books tv to puppies twitter timeline bubble fish off was sadly right that tk doesn't know how to book leaky tv yeah i mean there is definitely something to, to yeah it's, it's, it's one of them like it's there is definitely something to that but it's also tough mm-hmm. to like say out loud fish off was right you know <laughs> <laughs> like, there's definitely something to me. TK, TK is chronically online, online and like his locker room yes. knows that. But like, so are Hunter and Sean. But like, they don't let their chronically online them like affects them when they're like, no matter how terrible I think WWE is. And I think, I think NXT is like unwatchable. Like, and I think Raw is just pretty fucking boring. But like, they're just get they're like Hunter and Sean are going to get this shit off regardless. Like, they don't let the fucking internet tell them to do this and do that. And they're on Twitter all day reading this shit, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, TK, if you can't do the same, bro, maybe you just, you know, got to get off Twitter. And so it's TK's chronic, so many. You know, like mm-hmm. Hunt, Hunter and Sean and Court Bauer and any any bookie you <laughs> want to name, you know what I'm saying? Like, they're, they're on Twitter, bro, and they, def- they see, like, discourse. But they're not, they're not locked in and they're not chronically in it the way TK is to the point where it's like affecting the, his product and his decision making to the extent he does. Obviously it affects their decision making as well. Hashtag we want Cody. Do you know what I'm saying? But yeah. you know extreme TK T- yeah that's what I'm saying extreme examples where it's like that's not just yeah, when, when Cody's like, number we, one like people on for Twitter, a couple hours a bubble, you know. Like an example of this, right? And I didn't want to watch the fucking match. None of us wanted to watch the match, but like you don't need to be this reactionary, like the evil Uno shit that happened. That people was just like, "Oh, this is uh, this is pretty bad." I don't really want to see this. Then CK was just like, "Oh my god, oh my god!" And she's like, "Bring the fucking match, bro." That was the yeah, funny yeah, jam. Yeah, I'm sorry, but that was comedy. And it's like, it's it's like yeah, I didn't want to watch that, but like, you can't be, you can't be like, you can't sell for for niggas on Twitter that much, bro. Like, bro, it's like that. Um, it cooks this. It's cool, been, it's been, it's been rebooked for this weekend, bro. Zach Knight versus Angelo Park. No, yeah, and oh uh, yeah, that's, that was match. I didn't even see that. Bro, it got it got rebooked because remember that was meant to happen on a collision, bro. And everyone yeah. was like, no way. You know what I mean? Like, no, I don't get why they didn't just put that on Rampage and be done with it. Oh, I don't know why. Why is he? Storyline's anyway. not even still going. But... Showdown Spurs, five dollars. Appreciate you. Gay kid and Kingston are screaming at each other and destroying the press conference. This could be godly tomorrow. I would not. Yeah, have to, I'm gonna have to tap in. I'm gonna have to tap into that shit. I would not expect anything less from a press conference no. involving them to like Gay being deadly serious right now, like. Least Wait, tomorrow's, tomorrow's the Team Eddie versus Team Kid shit, right? Yes. Like, yes. yes. Oh, okay. So who's they on haven't Team revealed, Kid? They haven't revealed. They haven't, they haven't revealed anybody yet. I'm assuming it's just gonna be war, it. Isn't it just going to be War Dogs? Uh, there well, has to be an, another person, though, because Finley has a match, yeah. right? So Finley has a match, so it's going to... And Coughlin's done. And Coughlin's so tired, so... We got, we got Connors People. and we got Driller. And then, but I don't, you know, I don't know more. that Maloney's even in Chicago at the moment. Dude. Bro, like, they're gonna try. They're gonna try Kenta the out there, bro. They're gonna try. They're gonna try my gold Kenta out there. Probably. Um, that's 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 I just want to know who's that's on Eddie's that's team. That's like, I feel yeah. like Gabe's team is somewhat guessable, but when it comes to Eddie, I ain't got a fucking clue. He's gonna rock. Oh, uh, oh, Rock is book homicide. Ishii's in a match. So Rock, Rocky Marrero might I mean not Rocky, uh Homicide might be one. Um yeah. if he pulls up I'm with Despion, I'm gonna be fucking pissed that I couldn't be there. 
<laughs> but there's also uh, this being Gabe have been going back and forth on the timeline, so. Yeah, you got to check who's booked for the uh, New Japan Taiwan show because anybody on that show is I'm not in Chicago. Scooby. I have so, no yeah. clue. Yeah, it could it could just be an AEW team as well. Like, I didn't yeah. even think about it from that respect. Right, oh, no, if we pulled please. up with Mark Briscoe, that would be fucking sick. Sorry, I was looking at chat. Mark Briscoe, you know, we love him. Anyway, um, well, speaking I will of... Actually, uh, you know what? <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna save this. I'm gonna save this for a rainy day. We got a lot to get through today. Continue, continue, oh, Mazi. Well, I'm ready whenever. I'm ready whenever Look, bro, you want. This, this whenever, whenever, you wanna, whenever you want to try, whenever you want to try about fake Briscoe fans. You know, you know what about just fake I'm ass niggas fall. that call I'm themselves fall. Briscoe oh, fans. Geez, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go full Joey Coco Diaz, and I'm gonna put it out there. I'm gonna put it out there before. The, the liberals, <laughs> the, liberal. <laughs> the liberals like AO and the woke cancel culture, unpurish crew. Try oh, wow. All right, so rest of purest wrestler of the week. Um, there was a few people that voted for Mark Briscoe. A few. I voted. I voted for. I voted for Cody Rhodes because. Oh. Why would I do that? Because as much as I love Mark Briscoe and how much I thought his uh his match was with Eddie was tremendous and how much it moved me seeing him finally win the Ring of Honor World title, it was basically it was basically would have been me voting basically purely on like sentiment. And that's not to say that Mark Briscoe didn't, you know, uh, deserve some flowers for the match that he had and stuff. But like, let's be real, bro. How are we even having this conversation right now? Look, Cody Rose dethroned. Co- Cody Rose dethroned a 1,316-day world total reign in Roman oh, Reigns. Um, even if the match, even if you thought the match was bang average, both matches or anything he did throughout the week, the historical significance of what he did automatically makes him weak wrestler of the week like let's be real bro but again how are we even having this conversation after what cody rose did on the weekend never mind the fact that mark briscoe. i love mark briscoe bro look I, I, I said it i think um i might have said it on worldwide or i might have said it when i was talking to uh to someone about about this it's like bro no one on wrestle purist loves mark briscoe more than me bro and <laughs> even I, I think that Thinking that, that he was Monty, I, the week over Cody last week is like. I, I, I have a question for you, Monty. Four thousand and seventeen days. Do you know what that is? Do you know what that is, Monty? Go on, I That is the amount of time between the late great Jay Briscoe winning his first Ring of Honor World Title and his. Sweet baby brother, Sussex County Chicken, winning it and then looking up to the heavens beautiful. and honoring beautiful. his dead brother. You fucking piece of shit. You, you piece of shit. Mark Briscoe had a real chance to win. He was one vote short of time for the rest of the week. And Monty saw this. Monty, the alleged Mark Briscoe lover, he saw this and he's like, no, this not on my platform. Mark Briscoe will never be wrestler of the week on my platform. Uh, he was that one time, however. But, you know, that doesn't go with my agenda right now. When you said Mark Briscoe will never be wrestler of the week on my platform, he binned it. He binned the whole idea. Monty votes last every week, and he did this to Mark. He looks chicken in the eyes, and he took this away from him. You want to know why? Because he's not a real Briscoe's enjoyer. You're a piece of shit, Monty. You're not a good person. I'm gonna you, you, your name will be paraded in the streets. Everybody's gonna know what you did. Everybody's gonna know what you did, bro. And I hope your Cody loss was worth it. It was worth it because it was the right <laughs> thing to do. It was the right thing to do, Ayo. And here's the thing: the reason why I know that nobody at WrestleMania loves Mark Briscoe more than me because the people that think they do by voting for him last week, the rest of the week, know deep down in their hearts. That, that wasn't the right choice to make, and it would have been almost like you know, you can't we can't be giving away charity wrestling. Whoa, 
Because <laughs> this one, like I said, any of pretty much any other week, but we've done it. Mark Briscoe would have probably won, but bro, oh, Lance, again, Lance. I can't believe we're even like having this guy. Even though a lot of it is just us ha ha, but it's just like, are we, are, are we ha ha? Are, are, are we ha ha? Again, I love Mark Briscoe more than anybody, bro. But <laughs> when I saw the amount of people that voted for Mark Briscoe over Cody last week, I was like, how is this? Like, how? You know, like, what the fuck, bro? Like, bro, did what Cody, not, did did Cody, did I have Cody Rose just not just do the most historically significant thing in wrestling in like years? Like, did that not just happen? Okay. Like, <laughs> but you have to consider that that holds no weight for me because I don't give a fuck. That means nothing to me. But the Mark Yo, Briscoe Charlie, did. Charlie, Mark's over here yeah. talking about how historically impactful this is. That matter no, but when, that matter, and he threw we, need match to, no, we need to talk. We need to talk about as a collective, do it live on the stream. You know, we're all talking. It's not just. It's not just about like, oh, who had the best matches, bro. Like, if someone makes his no, 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 no it's that not. It's counts not. Towards, it's not. Counts towards oh, their yeah. wrestler of the week case. So when someone makes the amount of history that he made, it's like it's almost just like a foregone conclusion before we even open up the voting. Bro, like, boy. occasions like that are super rare because. Of course, they are super weird. Like, how often does someone get to dethrone the biggest star in the business after 1,316 days and it get over the way it did with the fanfare that it did and it work in the way that it did? That happens, like, once a decade, bro. Like, it was pretty you know, bad. <laughs> let me say what you want, any but but... Um, no, I mean, Cody, uh, at the end of the like, I didn't like the matches, right? But I can I understand the historical, like, importance. Yeah. Cody, I would have voted Cody if... Like the entire WrestleMania week slash weekend happened without the Briscoe match. Like Cody was yeah. definitely my number two. I don't know, bro. I don't know. I just I didn't like the matches. Ring of Honor just means a lot to me. The Briscoes mean a lot to me. I understand some people don't don't feel that way. I understand some people like Monty just hate the Briscoes. So you can only you can you can you can lead a horse to water, brother. Not just about it's not just like oh who had my favorite matches this week. Like that isn't what it's on. It's like historical significance absolutely counts towards wrestling brother, of the week. You know, and I'm a, I'm gonna pull your card right now though. I'm gonna pull your card right now because there was a week where Andrade had two good matches and Brian Danielson had two great matches, but they were just two great TV matches, right? But Andrade was one of the first people in history. So be to work CMLL, leave for triple, leave on really bad terms, go to triple A, their their blood rival like promotion, right? Mm -hmm. And then go back to CMLL, the major fan fell, fair, be a star, have his new name, be presented as that guy. That's historical shit. It doesn't happen. And you blew a fucking gasp. You said, what are you? What are, what are you not doing? I should take all your yeah, but that's money. A bit, bro, I think that's a bit bro. different to what happened at WrestleMania 40. Like, no, but I'm how, saying how, it's, how, like, <laughs> it's like the same situation with two, two completely different it? scales. Two completely different scales. But yeah, of course. Same, and that, that, that's what I mean. That scale, that scale means something. Like, do you know what I mean? It's like, <laughs> it's like Andrade, oh, as cool as it was, it was cool seeing I, uh, at AAA, CMLL. Don't see it often. Don't see it ever. It's cool. But it's not the same as what Cody did on the weekend, is it, bro? Like, it's completely... It's apples and oranges, bro. Like, mm. It's not... It's, Cody it's, will be arrested soon. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I'm working on something. We was talking about Mux at one point. Oh, yeah. Last time, 199. Yeah. Mux may, be the first, Mux may be the first person to hold the WWE, uh, AEW, and New Japan title. Which is which is true. Well, it's also like he's not the only person who realistically like can as well. Yeah, I think. That's a well, but AJ well, Styles, if he decided to leave WWE, mm. but he's not going to win the he's world. Not, he's not getting. He's not getting the world title. Know, you know, know. Maybe if it was twenty nineteen or twenty twenty. Do you know what I'm saying? Not like, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah I don't think like, there's yeah, Twenty nineteen definitely. It's just not much, within bro. the next five years. It's like Brian Danielson. He's good enough. But he's never won the AEW World Title, and he's never won the New Japan Title, and then he's retiring. He's but he's not retiring, time. but he's he's winding down next year. Yeah. So it's like, no, this year. Hmm. Yeah, is it this year? I'm trying to. Yeah, he, no, he's end, only, end this year. When he's when he's is the end of his full time career? From there, he says he's wrestling 10, 15 matches a year, which is still a lot. But yeah, that's still that's enough. 
that's it. That's for a star as big as him and his age, like, yeah. yeah, bro. You you, you find out that he's gonna be like on all the pay per views or whatever. Like you're happy with that. Yeah, I can live with it. I can live with it. Um, but yeah, Max is Max is special, man. He's gonna have such a cool legacy looking back. I think. Yeah, absolutely. Us living in it because this, like, let's be honest, like this. Wrestlers who are better workers than him. There's wrestlers who have like more aura than him, but there's no one quite like Max. And I think kind of that yeah. gets lost when he's not the, the world champ right in your face sort of thing. Yeah. I just think, I think his legacy is going to age so, oh, so he's, well. He's, he's like know? the funk of this generation without the uh, without the retirements. Well, without a few things, but I understand the comparison. Oh, well, he's... Uh... <laughs> He's better. <clears throat> oh, come for- <laughs> oh, but uh, that being said, I don't want to comment on this. Do I? Do I want to? He's better. But do I want to comment on? This? I want to comment on this. I do think Box will one day win a world title in New Japan. I don't think he has a fucking shot tomorrow. I don't think he ever had a shot of winning tomorrow. Not when the match was announced. Not when like all this stuff has been happening during this, where people have been like, "Oh, he's winning." No, he's losing. No, he's winning. I don't. I don't think he has a shot. Winning. It's just a really cool I match they wanted to book in America. I don't know, like, it, they kind of swung me on it because of, like, the fact that he's basically been written off of AEW TV right now. That was my big thing because Mox was such a central part to what was going on in AEW. But now he hasn't wrestled on AEW TV in over a month. Mar- like, Mar- if they're uh, gearing Mar- up for him up. to do, I think he just that also up. wouldn't surprise me. He's, he's, uh, he's beaten up right now. I don't know. I, I still think there's no. Yeah, but he's always beaten off. It's like, yeah. If Max wanted to be on, he's TV, a professional. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah, if he want, if he want to be, he would be, and he'd be wrestling every week. He's in condition. Like the and shape he's gone into as well. Like I don't know. I think there's fuel to the fire. To be honest. I mean, yeah, I, I, hey, if they if they book like New Japan, he's a shot in the arm. As much as I love Naito, like I like what he's doing at the top of the card isn't good enough for me. To look at the rest of this shit and be like, New Japan is in a good place right now. They're absolutely yeah. not, and that's because of Gato's booking. But if if Mox is the world champion and he's he's hitting a couple of the road twos and he's main eventing these shows, like that's that that's something for New Japan. That that's that's yeah. a real something. So I don't know. I wouldn't be I wouldn't be it against them at all if they do it. I just don't think it's happening. Mm-hmm. I'm excited. Um, Hush two dollars. Uh, over under? No. Oh, no. Is it? Okay, two dollars. Okay, punks next blow up who triggers it? Kevin Owens or Seth? Uh, oh. it'll it'll be Seth. It'll be Seth. I don't know, man. I don't know. It's he's all a heart five dollars. <laughs> as an as an aside. Max is definitely beating Night oh, right? He's being basically written off AW2. Well, we basically just talked about Yeah, that, we so. talked about yeah. <laughs> yeah, 199. Is Danhausen being punished and why is it deserved? I don't uh, get what right people... Now, no. I don't, I don't think get he's being punished, like, but what do oh. you do with him? No, but I didn't... I think this... No, someone tweeted, like, ah, oh, Danhausen, one of Punk's friends, you know what I mean? Like, Jack Perry, you know, he's being... You know what I mean? He hasn't wrestled since like November, and he's like, "Yeah, bro, bro. because no, who, no, there's no demand for fucking Danhausen right bro, now, and with the product they're doing, sucks, you're not gonna bro. force Danhausen in, are you? Like, you don't." And it, it's like, it's don't very clear. Like, yeah, it's very clear. Like, even though AEW's like cycled away from that, like even if even if you don't love the AEW television in like the last month or whatever. They're still not doing the cartoony, hokey bullshit that they were doing in the fall, which where like Dan Housen would fit in. Like he's not, like he doesn't fit in AEW TV right now. He fucking he can't fucking wrestle, bro. He had one of the worst matches of the year with Matt Cardona. Oh no 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 no, yeah Matt Cardona. Uh, like last week or two weeks ago, bro. It was fucking it was fucking god awful. Watch it. It gave evil depression. I'm like it's it's really bad, bro. Like. Not he doesn't need to be on TV. Just let his contract run out. Let him run the do the indies, all that shit. Corey David, two dollars. Appreciate. It. Obafemi is the future of pro wrestling. He's the future I of agree. sport. Yes. Just in general, you know. Like, Get him to the dub. Don't worry about it. He's, he is Lionel things. Messi. He is LeBron James. He is. Well, uh, he's Patrick Mahomes. He is. He's all of it. You know. That's what that's that's what we're dealing with. Um, 
custodian next is King, 499, back down to earth. Tony needs someone like Bischoff or Cornet or Conan to book his show. <laughs> to book his shows. He needs someone like Bully Ray to be an authority figure. I mean, that's what they all think. Yeah, well, Cornet, Cornet, the Cornet genuinely just fucking hates him, but like, <laughs> yeah. Um, Hosh 199, appreciate you. Rome should have been rest of the week, put over a Mikada shot, man. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, I think Rome that weekend doesn't happen okay. without Roman. Yeah, I think no, I think there's a good argument there. I think there's a, I think there's a, yeah. No, it's just he's probably it's just Cody Rhodes, man. Like, fuck me. Who's, who's, whose performance did you like more in night two, Roman or Cody's? I genuinely liked Roman's more just because it's just like, bro, I didn't even know you still remembered how to how to wrestle. Like, bro, yeah, when you hit that last cool, ride power bomb, I was like, yo, are we back? <laughs> I was like, are we, are we back? I knew, bro. I, I, I never doubted my tribal chief, you know, like that. Yeah, but that's because <laughs> him, like, putting on a headlock and, like, staring into the camera popped you. So you were like, oh no, this is this. Nah, is he's a good worker, man. He's a good worker, bro. People just, I don't know. He he just has a certain way of doing things since he got so over that he can just put a headlock and just get fucking heat, you know. And uh, he wrestles in a way that only he can kind of get away with, but that not in a like lazy, shitty way. Do you know what I mean? Like he's just a stadium wrestler, bro. I don't know how to explain <laughs> it. Like, it's just, I don't know, he's just in his natural habitat in the fucking stadium of 40,000 plus people. And he can kind of just work that crowd, everything he does to react to. And it's like, only he can get away with some of it. But anyway, big fan of Big Rome. I think he's great. Mustafa. I like Roman a lot until the bell rings. Oh, come yeah. on. He's a beast, man. Mustafa, two pounds. Appreciate you. Max wins it tomorrow, drops it to Shota at Forbidden Door. I'll be cool with it. I just, I just, I'll be pleasantly surprised. And Johnny Big Man, one night and on, Coastlands is big shooter taking about off marks at Forbidden Door. It makes sense, man, but I'm not, I, I have not really watched New Japan this year. I'm kind of on a strike. Um, <laughs> not missing a lot. That's what I'm saying, bro. And until like one of my friends who like I respect their takes, like comes to me and is like, yo. New Japan's right, like, it's starting to heat up, you know, so it's a good time to get on. Like, and I think I've watched, I watched Wrestle Kingdom, mm-hmm. and I think I watched, uh, I watched Suji versus Goto, Cup Final. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> that's it, that's, that's the only New Japan I've watched this year. I haven't watched, I didn't watch uh, Yota versus Naito, reviews didn't tempt me to watch it either. No, um, I've not. I've not watched any of Naito's title matches, if or when he's had them. Um, if, if I knew going into that Soccer that Genesis, watch- if I knew going into Soccer Genesis that you weren't playing in on watch, I'd be like, "Yo, come on, man! See, like this, this card looks all right. It's like a one match card." <laughs> like the, I haven't, the, the I haven't. junior tag match was really good, and then everything else you could just you could just skip. I have not made time for that show yet. Yeah, but anyway, uh, we'll do a quick Dynamite review because it was such a weird show that, like... My God, we're two hours um, in and we've talked about... Oh, yeah, but it's like, you know, we've had super chats, but we're in Medusa business. It's it's a business. This is a business, you know. Um, All right, AW Dynamite opened up with Samojo versus Dustin, apparently, but it didn't happen because Swerve just jumped Samojo as soon as he makes his entrance. They brawl a little bit, Swerve puts him through a table, uh... This was, this was cool, man. The crowd wasn't completely it was dead good for angle. it or anything as well. Do you know what I mean? It was a good angle. Um, yes. But obviously, the, the match is now up in the air. Is this match going to happen tonight? They're going to the back and everything. Do you know what I mean? We don't know. So, we skipped to Renee Paquette. She's at the back. She's outside Orange Cassidy's uh, locker room. She says she wanted to speak to him, but he ain't trying to talk right now, basically. And he's got some things to say on, was it Collision or Rampage or something like that? Um, but yeah, of course, he's just been turned on by Trent Barretta. And um, Trent Barrera and he, Chris Statlander was like, why did you do this? And he said, whispered something. He's like, oh, what's going on here? And now Orange Cassidy's not talking. So like, what's going on? But yeah, yo, cool angle with Swerve and, Swerve and Joe at the start. Not too much to talk about. Just yeah, even... I, I, I like the angle. Uh, crowd was there for, it, but not all the way. I, I would have liked to. I would have liked to hide a crowd. Would have made the angle even that much better. But 
Yeah, not much to say. I like Angel Demon. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Um, and yeah, of course, Orange Cassidy. Uh, do you think there's anything to this? Chris might just link up with Trent. Talk, uh, Charlie. Yeah. I, I think there is. Like, I was talking to John Patu about it on the timeline when the exclusive dropped. If you listen to that, like, full volume, you can kind of hear Trent say you've only got one life, Kristen, or something like that. So I think that she's going to link up with Trent. And it should be with Trent and Rocky, and it should be Rapongi Vice and Chris. And I think that could be very fun. But we'll see that what happens. could be very fun. That could be very fun. I'd be for it. I'd be mm. for it. All right, so... So we don't get Dustin versus... We don't get Dustin versus Samoa Joe in the World Total Eliminator match because, of course, Sod Swerve comes out and they do the angle. And, uh, so the first match of the show is Penta Alzero Mado versus Adam Copeland for the TNT Championship. And um, yeah, Adam Copeland retained here. And I will throw it to you first. Charlie, what did you think of Cope versus Penta? Um. I think there was some cool stuff towards the end, but I didn't really enjoy this match. Pentlo as a TV wrestler, like singles wrestler, is kind of boring to me these days. It was just kind of soulless through some of the work. I enjoyed like the, I don't know, the novelty of seeing someone like Penta and Copeland go back and forth like this. And Copeland was pulling out some lucha moves that popped to me, but I don't know. In general, the match, it wasn't really my sort of thing. Yeah, it was uh, I don't need track. Oh, what, what did you make of that? Uh... So I was the most forgiving to this match here, and uh, even I didn't love it. I think it got where it needed to get eventually towards the mm-hmm. end. I liked I liked their work at the end, but it took it took way too long to get there. Um, Pentagon Junior, brother. Like I do appreciate like somebody somebody pointed this out on the timeline. And in the spot that they used to the uh, the Lucha Copeland spot, right? Like Pentagon slowed himself down a lot so that shit would go smoothly, right? Mm-hmm. So I do appreciate when he works slower in instances like that instead of just hitting the ropes as hard as he fucking could, like doing a fucking T Harris as hard as he as fast as he could, and then like Copeland has to make sure he does like the flip on time and all that shit. Like he slowed it down a lot for him, right? But. It didn't. It didn't need to be that speed the whole match, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, uh, it was. They were really. They were really crawling there in the beginning, and I love Penta, bro. It was just like they were crawling there in the beginning, and it was like I don't know if they like put the whole thing together like backstage, and they weren't calling anything in the ring. But like once they saw that the crowd was just like not there. I feel like they should have like both made the decision to, to pick it up and like yeah. change up this match a little bit. Let's let's hit some fucking moves, whatever the fuck. Cause like there was some points in the show you could hear a fucking pin drop. And I was like, yo, this is uncomfortable. I gotta look at my phone instead of watching this shit. But I I did I did like the match. Like I know some people thought it was fucking dog shit because of like Penta's effort and shit. Like I I feel like it got to where it needed to get eventually, but it took too long to get there. Right, so like, yeah, I thought this was quite criminal, to be honest. <laughs> it's um, as you guys have mentioned, like Penta, Penta likes to kind of chill out there sometimes, you know. Um, he definitely is a wrestler that does better when he's in a match that he can really kind of get his teeth into and be motivated about if he's involved in like a storyline like a lot of people immediately point to the stuff that he was doing with triple a and the mask versus mass mass versus mass match that he had with the line of four um and things like that and like the moments he's created over there in that like phase and it's like oh penta in mexico is this you know what i mean and penta in the us is that and it's like maybe it's just a motivation thing maybe it's an opponent thing maybe it's an atmosphere thing that helps his motivation as well i don't know what it is but i think in a period era of time when Tony Khan and AEW as a promotion are really trying to hammer home to their audience that they are the alternative because they are where the best wrestle. 
that is a big part of their show. And I think yeah, that is something that they need to continue to take seriously. So I think when they book a opening match that's going to come not immediately at the start because they're going to do an angle and they did the thing with Renee backstage and that. And it's like, so the, so the match happens at a time in the show where you're going to have two ad breaks through it, you know? And I just think booking somebody who in recent times has shown little, you, you won't say no effort because he, at the end of the day, he's out there, he's taking bumps and shit, you know? But in terms of like what we think he can do and what we've seen him do, his level of effort is like quite crazy, I think. Um, especially again when they're trying to get over this whole narrative, like this is where the best wrestle and this is where the best do their thing. And then the first match on Dynamite is Penta just kind of strolling around for about twelve minutes um, yeah. because genuinely, like the first, I was going to say the first half, but like the first two thirds of this match, like really not a lot happens at all. Um, he picks up a little bit after the first ad break. And then there's that weird screen, that weird thing comes up on screen, the map or whatever the fuck it was. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I after they come that. back around them, I'm not sure what feed it showed up on, but it showed on more fight feed. But, yeah. Um, so, yeah, it, come, it kind of comes back after the first ad break. It picks up a little bit. And then, you know, we get the countdown to the Young Bucks thing on popping at home. And then we go into the second ad break. And, bro, Penta literally, like, stops. He just like stops yeah. for a minute and just kind of does nothing. Looks at the crowd a bit, and he kind of like grabs Edge's le- Adam Copeland's leg, and you know like, he just does nothing, bro, because it's like he knows he's in ad break. He's not putting in the hundred percent effort as it is anyway. And I'm not saying you have to go hundred and ten percent Will Ospreay fucking every week, you know. But fuck me, there's got to be a middle ground, you know. And again, yeah. when AEW, and I'm watching this, thinking like this is where the best wrestle, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like. <laughs> And it's just Penta just walking around doing fucking nothing. And kind of to AO's point, I'll get Adam Copeland, yeah. You could tell that like he wanted to go in there and have like Penta's match. Yeah. Do some shit with him, take some lucha moves, do what he wants to do. I'm gonna sell for you, I'm gonna let you get your shit off and that. And I think that's just dangerous to play with Penta, bro. Because unless he's like, let's go out there and fucking kill it and make a fucking historic like he's gonna go out there and we're gonna get a match like last night where he does basically yeah. nothing. The double digit minutes, they have a nice few spots like Edge hit a nice apron, uh, a nice apron power, power slam. slam that looked really cool. Yeah. And then they go to the finish, and the finish was cool with the top rope code red, and and the finish, and ultimately the finish. But fucking twenty fucking minutes this went, bro. Like mm-hmm. what? What are we doing? Like what is this? <laughs> like on what planet is a <clears throat> Penta? A Penta TV total match that goes 20 minutes through two ad breaks against a 50 year old, a fucking good idea. Uh, I just don't. And you know, you know, you know, Colt, bro. You know, Colt. He's, he doesn't do 10 minutes or less, brother. He's gonna, just, he's gonna go out there and get his, oh, you know, gotta go out there and get his uh, 20 minute up match time, bro. No, you wanna know the worst thing is? I actually like Penta. Like, I say. Yeah. Oh like, yeah, do you know what I mean, like, as a presence that. to have on TV, he's a wrestler I'd sign, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But in terms of put, booking him in singles matches like this, you've got to be fucking crazy at this point in 2024. After what we've seen of him in the past like year or so, it's like, it's bro, he's just, I know you didn't watch the Commander he's not match, locked right? Because <laughs> the... it's sad, bro. Because like I can't hate you for this narrative because like I, you probably didn't watch the fucking Commander match because it was was that uh was that Rampage or was that Collision? That was collision that was on for like uh, okay, like, yeah, like, but it was like during the fucking morning. yeah, 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 last yeah. Week. it was like three in the morning, it was after the fucking WrestleMania and shit. Like, you didn't, I know you didn't watch that shit. It was a really I good match, bro. I liked it a lot. Like, I was hovering around, I don't know if I went for on the spreadsheet or not, but I was hovering there and uh, uh, I mean, fucking probably, like, yeah, you, just, you missed it completely. Minutes. Yeah, <laughs> no, you missed it completely, and then it goes minutes. back to fucking. And he's wrestling just a lucha that can just kind of he can just kind of do shit with base for do you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. But if he's if you if you give him a match, do you know what I mean? Like the way that Copeland did for a majority of like, like just give him the match. Like yo, you do your shit. I'm gonna sell. We'll have your match. You know what I'm saying? Then we'll go to the finish. I'm gonna pin you. Like giving Penta that in 20 minutes through two ad breaks is like promotional malpractice. <laughs> 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 Um, I did it did make me want to see Copeland wrestle Bandido when he's back, though, because I feel like that 
Bandido in this box. Yeah, that would really be, be, be great. Yeah, I just, yeah, this was, this, I thought this was quite brutal, to be honest. The, the, the runtime was the main thing, though, in terms of, like, I didn't think the work was, like, sloppy and terrible or anything. It's just that like, yeah. the runtime and the way Penta feels time was just fucking criminal to me. Uh, and the ad breaks definitely didn't help either, so. Um, but yeah, after the match, House of Black appeared, the lights go out, Julia and Brody appear in the ring and they well, Julia doesn't actually attack, but like, you know, she like intimidates and Brody attacks uh Copeland and when a nightingale makes a save, pop me huge. Yeah. <laughs> Copeland great. like Copeland's always down to like put women over in a way that makes them equal to the men. He did it mm-hmm. in WWE with Rhea Ripley. He was like let Rhea Ripley like hit him with a big boot or sell for her or like, yeah. he would instead of just being like because you see a lot of wrestlers especially like with Rhea and stuff over the years so it's like oh yeah I'll let Rhea do X, Y and Z in the sense of like oh yeah I'm cool to let her go over on me or whatever you know mm-hmm. but like all they'll actually do is just like I don't know, like do a stare down with her. Yeah, do like a stare down with her or yeah. something like Copeland was fully like bumping for her and shit, bro. You know? Yeah. Like, then obviously today, no, l- last night he got fully like fully saved. Like a full on like classical wrestling save by a woman, mm-hmm. which was cool. Yeah. It was cool to see. And I love Willow, so yeah. This worked for me, you know. Um Has there been any updates on this uh Julia Hart's uh, shoulder situation. Mm. Dynasty is next week, brother. Yeah, that's that would be wildly unfortunate because uh, you remember she was having the shoulder problems before, which I hilariously was unsure if it was true or not. Then it got reported. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, yeah. Um, I always bring that one up. But anyway, yeah, it's a shoulder again, man. It's a shoulder mm. again. Apparently, Dave said something about like they was worried about an injury, but still haven't got an update. So. Um, I haven't seen anything since then, so I don't know what the situation is. But usually, when it goes quiet, that's uh, it's not a good sign, it's not the greatest sign. Um, yeah, because it's not like AEW sources I haven't been talking today, you know. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, I'm not sure if they've not been asked because it's been lost in like the madness of like the past 24 hours, or if it's unfortunate news that they're trying to keep quiet about, yeah. Um, uh, if she's injured, you gotta get her out of here. What do you mean? Not like out of get the company. The I mean, like <laughs> get the, tight, get the get belt, the belt off. Like, get the belt off. Her. I don't mean like fire. Her. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> like I don't even, Monty. I don't know if you agree with me or not, but like, yeah, if they knew that she couldn't wrestle from uh from World's End until what was the first paper of the year Revolution. Yeah, I would, you would take the belt off, her, right? Like you oh, took the belt off. Her, yeah, of course. Like, you can't I would never put the belt. Like, I know no. she got over and stuff. At the yeah, bottom, she got she got know? over as fuck. So you put the belt on or whatever. I wouldn't yeah, have done it, whatever. I, I was gonna say I would not have put the belt on her in the first place, bro. She's not. I don't. Wanna, I don't want to just bluntly say she's not good enough because like she's young as fuck, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and she's making progress, and there is promise I... there, and there is things to like about her. But in terms of like carrying my TV title for the women's division, it's like oh, that is not the role I'd give to Julia Hart in yeah. year year two or three of her career. Like it's just not. So, you know, that's where I'm at with. Uh... Like, I, I think she definitely earned the opportunity to see mm-hmm. if she could handle it, and she 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 can't. So let's uh. Let's let's pivot and revisit this down the road. Yeah, it's like at least with like Jade, like she was like a unique star and presence of like this like aura of undefeated and blah blah blah. You know what I mean? And I thought Chris was a good champ. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah. I, love, I love everything Chris Stalling does, bro. I think she's like yeah, one of the best she's in the world, awesome. honestly. Yeah. She doesn't get enough credit for how good she is, considering the injuries she's had as well. All right, so I'm just making sure I don't know where this is. All right, so there was about I'm not sure where in the show this was. I'm not sure if it was immediately after or just a little bit later on. But there was the backstage segment with um with all of them basically. Um, we had Copeland, we had Willow, we had. Uh, Eddie Kingston and Eddie, Mark Briscoe. Uh, yeah, yeah. Eddie, Eddie Kingston and Mark Briscoe were like the start of the promo and they're talking about, you know, 
uh, Mark Briscoe's just became champ, and you know, uh, they've got the House of Black match coming up and whatnot. And then Edge comes into frame and he's with Willow. Like, I don't know if you just saw what happened out there, but you know, we got to do something about these guys. We're gonna have a match with them next week, or I'm gonna deal with them next week. And basically, there's, there's this basically just to set up a mixed tag match for next week Willow and Copeland versus. Julian Brody. and Brody. If she's obviously cleared and can go, yeah, because the wife could end up being and Sky Brody. Blue and Brody. Oh man! Anyway, <laughs> um, so yeah, that, that's cool. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. That is really if cool. Julia, if Julia can't go, um, I think you have to let Sky Blue in that tag match and and yeah. wrestle on Julia's behalf at uh yeah. at Dynasty. Um, mm. I don't, I don't really care how Willow gets the belt. Um, Julius' little like heel run here with the with the title, it never really me, made me be like, yo, like I need, I need to see her get beat to put this on the person I want. Like, no, yeah. just, 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 just put it on the person I want. Let's, uh, let's, let's go from there. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see. I do Hopefully think. Do the funniest part of this segment was Stokely saying Willow should challenge Copeland for the TNT hey, title. Man. I'm, I'm hey, with it. Hey, man. Hey, man. <laughs> um, <laughs> you Willow all the belts. Willow's... I oh, fucking love Willow, bro. Um, I think she's awesome. To the top. To the moon. Um, mm. All right, so... We have this we have this Jericho promo with Hook and Shibata backstage and uh, basically it's like it's Jericho calling plays <laughs> like a quarterback and he's um he says Hook and Shibata are now sat under the learning tree of Chris Jericho and uh Jericho's gonna you know Jericho's gonna knock out Anthony a go go like he's just calling out these ridiculous plays and Hook and Hook and Shibata are just kinda of like, Yeah, whatever. And Shibata does his phone translator gimmick thing. Where he's just kind of like, what's this guy's problem? And it's all, you know, it's, it's slightly humorous. But yeah, man, more Jericho on the shows. <laughs> so that happened. I don't even know what to say at this point. <laughs> we don't have to, we don't have to like fully review and break down every segment. Yeah, Sometimes I, segments I, I, think, just... <laughs> I think for once this wasn't like the disgusting, like get the fuck out of my face experience. With Jericho, but since it's like sandwiched with those experiences, it's just like it's all pretty bad. Like it's not gonna yeah. get better. So is under his like... learning tree. Yeah, but that that pops me. That was funny. Like I like you like you oh, it uh, I clearly, but like um, yeah, bro. Like I don't need to see Jericho on TV right now, bro. I don't. I don't need to see that at all. But I think this like in a vacuum was just like fine. But the issue with wrestling TV is it's it's not in a vacuum, so it's not. Um, all right, so next was the footage. Shivani was not happy. <laughs> okay, scroll, scroll, scroll. All right, then after after the footage is shown and the young books do their performance art, uh, FTR, their music hits, they're apparently not on the rundown for the show. They're just coming out here to talk to the people because, you know, they're so pissed off about what they just saw. And uh, basically, Cash grabs a mic and he's like, "Why? What? What are we doing? Like, we we just want to move on past this. We're sick of hearing about this. We're tired of hearing about this. Everybody in the back is ready to move on. You just making up a built-in excuse for why we beat you at Wembley. And basically, this is bullshit. And we do all these great shows at AEW. Why do we have to talk about something from eight months ago? Um." And you know now this match with you guys is more even more important than it already was because we have to beat you petty little EVP bitches or whatever you call them. And um, yeah, then Dax also says like you know basically the point of this problem is that the young books have like lost themselves, and it's a shame because if it weren't for the young books, I might still be shaving Cash's back, which obviously everyone remembers the. Uh, the segment with the Usos <laughs> that he did in WWE. He's like, even though it wouldn't, if it weren't for the Young Bucks, we wouldn't be here sort of thing. We have now eclipsed them. Uh, young Bucks have lost their way. 
uh, and we want to now create a great AEW. And if the Young Bucks don't want to be a part of it, they can take their ball and go home. Um, I think in terms of like, considering like what they're coming off of, following, and obviously it being directly involved in what they're doing, it's like this from this promo in terms of the content they were saying was like it good, it was good, and it made sense. But it's just kind of like the crowd was just fucking baffled at this point. Mm-hmm. So they're they're like, do we cheer them or do we? Because they're the punk guys. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, because yeah. like, the content, of, like I said, the content of the promo was solid for what that for the context of what they were dealing with, which was kind of unfortunate. But you know, and obviously it takes you out of it as well when you've just watched something like that, and then it's just like, oh, here's a promo. Because like mm-hmm. everyone's just like looking at the discourse online, or people in the arena are just distracted, being like, what the fuck did we just see? You know? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, like Charlie, you're kind of you're 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 the go-to person for storylines involving the young books. Mm-hmm. What did you make of this this promo in retaliation to the footage um, and what they were doing? Yeah, I thought it was like the best sort of promo they could have cut. Like doing this a week removed from Copeland's promo is also really fucking funny because it was just like we're having another AEW's great promo, but it, at least it made sense in this context. Mm-hmm. Um, I think one of the main issues is, is like the whole Bucks releasing the footage thing. It's like they're doing the whole, they're acting like they're doing things for the good of the company when they're not, it's for their own selfish gain. And that's like the point FTR were trying to make. But because the crowd was so out of it at that point, like it didn't really get across the way they wanted to. So I think in a vacuum, like they could have achieved what they wanted to, but it just was placed weird and the crowd didn't know what the fuck, like how to interpret shit. I don't know. I thought it was a decent enough promo though. I think they achieved what they needed to. And it gave the match of dynasty more story, which thank God for that because of, I was not excited for this match to be honest. Yeah. Ayo, notorious FTR hater. Um, well, I, I, I tell the well, truth. Some people like it. Some people. Well, don't yeah, like it. We, 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 that's all we ever do at this channel is tell the truth. But I, as much as uh, I'd never ask you to put biases or agendas aside, you know. But FTR were put in kind of a weird position here, regardless of whether they're signed off on the footage being used or whatever or not. You know, like this is kind of a weird segment to follow. You know, so like, how did you think they kind of dealt with it? I, I touched on this um, when I did my little rant in the beginning when we just talked about the footage, like the FTR promo. After, I don't think it was very good at all. Were they put in a good position? No. Um, I think it was I think it was all pretty bad. Doesn't make me more excited for the match. Uh, makes me dislike that these guys are even wrestling with each other. I don't think they have any chemistry. Uh, yeah, bro. Just keep them away from so each what, other. So what was bad about it? Uh, what 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 should that? Well, first of all, first of all, you have you have Cash Wheeler middle of the ring with a microphone. That's never fucking good, brother. <laughs> Second of all, like the FTR were like FTR were like baby facing themselves. Was like you got to just 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 fucking cry babies, bro. Like. I don't know. I didn't. I, no, I didn't think the it was narrative. very good. That's the storyline, not just so much FTR, just baby facing themselves. The storyline and the way no, no, that's not even like baby face them. You know what I mean? So they're baby faces anyway. So no, nah, I know, I know, I know, I know. But it's just like, come on, bro. Like, yeah, like we, Dax is doing 50 50 promos with Dax. Dax is fucking when he's talking. It's not about his daughter and his family and his wife. Wow. It's just. <laughs> He's like he's a waffle merchant and shit, bro. Just, I'm not trying to watch this shit. Like I don't think it was good. I don't like I. They probably should have just did a pre-tape, honestly. Mm. Probably should have. I don't know. Mm. I don't know, man. I think, I think you. I think you're very harsh, Channel. Uh, not to say this was a fucking great promo or anything like <laughs> that, but I don't know, man. I am interested that you. Fuck. At the, at the end of the day, though, if, it, if a Dax promo, as you've already said, like if a Dax or Cash promo, just it's just inherently, just it just not, it's never going to move in. You know? <laughs> like, just their style of promo, you know, I can kind of see that. But I don't know, man. I don't know, man. I thought I thought they said as much as they could have said. Really, I don't know what else they could have said. 
That's kind of, I guess that's kind of where I'm coming from as well. It's like, wow, I was the fucking good, good to say after that weird man. Um, yeah. All right. FTR promo. Uh, Brian Danielson versus Will Ospreay video package. Very cool. Nice little, nice little hype for Dynasty. And then this is immediately followed by a live promo on the stage with Renee and Will Ospreay. And Will Ospreay, he's been hearing some rumours this week, Al. He's been hearing he's been the rumours. He's been hearing the rumours. He's been hearing uh, the wokes. <laughs> they're saying they're saying that he's uh they're saying that he's running from the grind. He's a grind runner, and he don't want to do this and etc cetera, etc. Cetera. And Will Astro was basically shooting his down, saying, "Yo, this is bullshit." And I normally wouldn't rise to this kind of bullshit and pettiness, but it's funny because the person who said it, oh, he's only in the position that he's in. Because he was grinding on the boss's daughter. What a Obviously. fucking beast, the Billy Goat. <laughs> so he gets that out of the way. He obviously had something on his chest regarding that. So he gets that out of the way. Gets his shot off at Triple H. Whether you popped for it, whether you thought it was whatever, it's up to you. Um, and then he cuts a promo on Brian Danielson, which I thought was really good as well. Um, he basically said, like, you know, he's, Brian's fought all these different people and, you know, stronger than him, faster than him, etc. But he's already found a way. And he, he was like, the only way that Brian Danielson has a chance against myself, the aerial assassin, is if he grounds me. And he's not going to be able to ground me because great men have tried and failed. Um, big men, strong men, fast men, blah, blah, blah. But you're Brian Danielson. And he can't call himself the best in the world until he pins Brian Danielson. And it's time for Will Ospreay to show us, as an AEW audience, what he's bringing to the table and why he's the ace of AEW. So um, I really like this as kind of like a mission statement, you know. I thought this was really good. Uh, more evidence that Will Ospreay might be the one, you know. <laughs> I, I, I think he is the one. I think... um. I think there are multiple ones right now. But I think mm. Will Osprey just has like he has he has it, bro, in a way that yeah. you know, few people alive have it. Like this this is this is an amazing TV wrestler. He's gonna be all time he's already an all time wrestler, like even before he put the fucking pen to paper with AEW. But I feel like he has everything that he needs to be an all time T like have an all time TV run now. Like he Osprey's amazing, bro. Like I, I never I never really like hated on his promos as much as others have, and I know Brits are like still kind of like, eh, on on his promos. I think because y'all don't like the mirror being held up to y'all selves. I mean, do I really sound like that? Yeah, you fucking, you really do. It's because he hams it up, and it. It's because he hams it up. Yeah, I do. I, yeah, there's there's, yeah. there's, there's, a, there's a shucking and jiving element that I get that y'all have with him. It's just like, bro, like, come on, bro, like, yeah. You're trying to pop these stupid Americans, but so I get that. But yeah, I I, I really like Osprey's promo, bro. But he's better. He's already better on TV than I ever would have thought. Like as a character yeah. and as a baby face, and the and the fans, bro. Like they sounded like an actual dynamite crowd instead of like fucking zombies when he was out there cutting that promo and stuff. Like they were stupidly locked in. They were reacting. It was great. I, I like the segment a lot. Yeah. Bro, and that, that grind runner shit. I see the drones trying to run with it now. Will Ospreay has been signed to New Japan since, like, what, 2016, Chuck? Yeah. And he's been making six figures there since, like, 2018. And he's been on the British Indies killing himself, trying to put on, like, seven-star classics. For 11 years. Every month, that entire time, he never stopped. He didn't have to, bro. His race probably like what five hundred fucking dollars, but he did it anyway for the love of the game. Mm-hmm. He could have left the indies like realistically, like late twenty eighteen, and he would have been fine. Yeah, hundred percent. No, Will, Will's definitely not a grind runner, bro. Like, <laughs> Triple A. If tri obviously Triple H didn't mention Will Ospreay by name, and you could kind of insert wrestler here with a few of the free agents that they've missed, you know. But, um, you know, Will, Will Ospreay is kind of the worst person to kind of, mm -hmm. you, know, either, do you know what I mean? Even if it is true, even if it is true that he signed with AEW and one of the, well, obviously we know he signed with AEW, but one of the big reasons would be like, because he can have more flexibility with his schedule. 
Um, evidently, I thought we've seen so far, it's not it's not kind of like a pack deal, you know. Yeah, so he, he's here. Well, pack been here every week. Well, he's signed week as well. So, but we know that that's not that's not like the norm. Mm-hmm. Like, bro, yeah. it's the last, and I don't even care that Triple H said it, bro. Like, I don't, I don't give a fuck that promoters give shot, take shots back and forth. It's these fucking drone marks, bro. You disgusting, you disgusting, stupid drones that run with that shit. Disgusting. Yeah, he's uh. Oh, as far as as far as like his shot at Triple H, it's like he didn't really do anything for me. He didn't. I I wasn't like oh, as if he said that, you know, and I wasn't. I wasn't popping for it either. It was just kind of a, it was it was just kind of a thing that he said on the show, and I was like, oh yeah, yeah. Triple H should take that shot. You know, I guess, you know, fair enough. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, but the thing is, is like, so did, did it did it need to be brought to TV because it was like, how much of your audience is aware? Do you know what I mean? Like there there was, there was yeah. that element to it, but I didn't like I said I didn't really like care for it, and I didn't really. He didn't bother me. He didn't pop me. He didn't do anything. Um, but yeah, you can obviously people can argue about whether he should have, shouldn't have done it all day long. But it was only like ten seconds yeah. of the it promo. Was, I was gonna say it was like one line of a promo that was centered yeah. around Brian Danielson, and the Brian Danielson part of the promo was actually really fucking good. And I think this is probably like the best segment that Osprey's done so far. And like they've done a really good job with this build, considering the fact they've been face to face like what once, and the rest of it's just been promos back and forth, and then like wrestling. Like I don't know, I've really enjoyed the build for this and Osprey's promo. He didn't really ham up the tendency, the tendency like that much last night, which is probably why I really liked it. But um, yeah, I think he did a great job. He's been a much better promo in AEW than I was anticipating. So. Yeah, well, well, like I said, Will Ospreay, I think. You know what the funniest thing is? It's like, I just think it's the connection he seems to have with the crowd at the moment. Like, mm-hmm. the AEW audience just it's sees crazy. him. As, they just see him different, bro. Like, he's not like another wrestler walking out there. Like, he's, he's different. Mm-hmm. Like, there's like an aura to him in terms of how the audience treats him. Um, yeah. They just re and they just kind of like they're willing to play along with him and do the bruvs and the geezers mm-hmm. and the whatnots and you know what I mean like they'll they'll play along and they'll do it man like they really really have taken to him in a way that an AEW signing hasn't been taken to in forever. Seems like mocks. That's what I mean forever. So um, yeah. I think there really is something special there. Like, I don't even think it's a thing where it's like, when I say he's the one, I don't think it's because I think he's the best in ring worker in the world. I don't think it's because I think he's been cutting great promos. I can take mm-hmm. or leave his promos, to be perfectly honest. Um, yeah. He's in ring, of course. He's a very, very dynamic, amazing athlete. Um, I'm not sure who I think my best wrestler in the world is, but like, you know, I'm not one of those people who's like, he's oh, clearly the best wrestler in the world. Do you know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I think that connect. I think that connection that he has with the crowd is like the main thing, man. It's, from what I've seen so far, they've just different. talked to him in a way that, as Charlie yeah. said, we haven't seen since like Mox. You know, it, it's crazy. So I don't know. Maybe you have to speed track that world title run. I don't know. But it's like yeah, I was driving. I was against all him, in, it all in. But um, bro, like there's there's nothing wrong with uh, there's nothing wrong with four month title reign. He's definitely gonna win it back. The is definitely gonna win it back. I feel like I feel yeah. like they could uh Swerve and Osprey will have the chemistry to be do this whole yin and yang thing like Hangman and mm-hmm. uh Hangman and Swerve have been having. Like I feel like all three of them is the, that's a great main event for the next ten years. Then you add mm-hmm. other pieces in and out of that. I, I I'm not complaining, bro. You have you have Swerve, Hangman, fucking Osprey at the top of the card. Yeah. Um Fucking Osprey, man. He's uh, they they fucking love him, bro. They absolutely yeah. love him, and I think there's just something to that. And obviously, you can take that ball and run with it because his matches are exciting as fuck, and they get super over. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, man, Osprey still trending in the right direction, which is good to see. Yes. Um, Julia Hart was next up. She did like a spooky pre-taped video package. Um, I thought this was actually, in terms of like the aesthetic and everything that the House of Black go for. I thought this was actually quite well done, um, mm-hmm. as far as like spooky 
video packages and shit go, you know. Uh, she said something about she's going to kill Willow Nightingale's spark and she's going to turn that frown upside down and she'll never take my crown. Or There was some kind of cool word play. Yeah. Um, but right. yeah, it, it, this is a cool visual, man. A cool visual. <clears throat> But yeah, I like I like Julia. I do like Julia, but like I said, TBS title is a bit yeah, cool. too much too soon. I think yeah, she's, a, I think she's a good talent. It coming at the same time that the world, the women's world title, also had a gimmick champion, kind of put a damper on it as well. But that's a conversation we've had about seven times before. So, uh, we've got one little super chat here. Keep them coming, people. We could take a little. Yes. We ain't gonna be around forever because we're already deep in this one. But anyway, Westwood two pounds. Appreciate you. Ayo, what happened with Jade and the baddies? Uh, in brackets on pure sack. So they uh they broke up and then Jade went to WWE. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where did happen. not catch her wrestling on Monday Night Raw because Triple H doesn't think she's any good. It's unfortunate, Jade. Well, it's the real reason is because she's on SmackDown. But, uh. Oh, well, you know, I'm doing my thing. <laughs> 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 uh, the Chelsea Green match was on SmackDown? Was the Chelsea Green match on SmackDown? Yeah. Uh, no, no? Yeah? No, that no. was the no, exactly, Raw after That Raw after Yeah, I knew. Yeah, because I, yeah, I, I knew. I heard about a 30, 30 something second match with Jade. And it wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't she, on she, is, she is SmackDown. She is smart now. Um, try, try, try to own me, bro. She's, she's supposed to the only team that's on Raw. Hmm. <laughs> it's like you owned yourself because you was like, she, you're not going to see her wrestle on Raw. And I was like, because she was on SmackDown. And you was like, well, she did wrestle on Raw. <laughs> so like... oh, oh, well, fuck you. <laughs> anyway, um, Julia Hart, spooky package, uh, trios match, Lion Hawk and Shibata versus Shane Taylor, Anthony Gogo, Lee Moriarty. This was this was okay, whatever. Uh, the finish is, is gonna be spoken about because you know, Hawk and Jericho are like arguing on the outside, then it causes Katsuri Shibata to get pinned in the middle of the ring, clean as a whistle by Lee Moriarty. Um, crazy, crazy sentence, yeah, man. It happened. Sure <laughs> they're, they're, they're running a singles match this weekend, though. So, yeah. so but it's obviously just going to like not kill Moriarty. They're not going to bury Moriarty like that. But like, Shibata's going to win convincing. Like, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Monty, how do you feel about uh, Shane Taylor Promotions? Um, as a as a faction, I think the ceiling is quite low and I don't have the most faith in AEW to come up with something super creative to get him to like the next level um, but in terms of like talent wise I think Lee Moriarty showed a lot of promise on the indies and when he first came in that dramatically kind of fell off a cliff but I do think he's slowly building himself up and you can start to see his confidence coming back Anthony Gogo, useless asking me my opinion on him because how much of him have we seen in the past few years? Hardly anything. Right. Uh, Shane Taylor, I think he's a, I think he's a good wrestler, but I think he's like his choice of look is quite not off putting, but it's just not great, is it? You know, like the I feel like he could have better gear and stuff, but you know, he's been better well, recently. Been he, no, he's been better recently, but I just mean in general, you know, because like, when he was coming out in the singlet and shit, he was like, yo, away with the singlet shorts combo or whatever the fuck it was. He was like, <laughs> um, but as a talent, bro, he, I think he's got good offense and in the matches he gets booked for on AEW in the sense of like, he's a heel for someone to beat, but look somewhat credible. But like, he can, like when a Copeland or someone like that will give him space to do some offense and shit, he can do some good offense, man. He's got good physicality, some good moves and stuff like that. So he can fill the space if it's ever given to him and he's given the opportunity to. But like I said, I think the ceiling's pretty, quite low. No. In, uh... It's a weird group, man. Yeah, it's a, it's a weird it's a weird. Group. I... Somebody, somebody that chats and Shane should be someone's heavy, not a stable leader. I don't know about. I, I feel like if he was like the number two in mm. that faction, like imagine a world 
where Keith Lee lost 50 pounds and loved professional wrestling again. And he was the leader of that faction. Like, oh, like, y'all were cooking with something here. Right? But we don't live in that world. I don't I don't I don't really see him as a faction leader either. I, I do think that he that his television run is is going slightly better than I would have assumed if you told me he'd be on TV this much. So that's a, that's a credit to him. But yeah. He's also a decent promo as well. Yeah, he's not. Yeah. He's comfortable on the mic. He's definitely. I mean, I, mean, I yell. I, I literally yelled out loud when he compared himself. No, when he put himself in the same sentence as Marvin Hagler and Rocky Marciano. <laughs> but, you know, he, he can talk. He can talk as well, man. So like, he's a good yeah. talent. It's just I, 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 I don't worry because he's not like he's not top of my priority list of yeah. people I want to see. Like, like for example, like Willow Nightingale. Like I'm invested in AEW getting it right yeah. with her. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah, I like Shane, man, and I like the others as well. It's just obviously it's how the position. I do like. I really, I really hope a go-go could put it together, bro. Like, I've seen a go-go wrestle within the last. I've heard his red fro run is uh, when. Uh, I heard his red fro run. Don't, don't, don't hold play. out. Don't hold out. Bro. He's such a good talker, bro. That motherfucker can talk, bro, and he's got the look, and he's Nigerian, bro. Like, it's just. And then the bell rings. Oh, 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 oh. The match he had against RKJ was the funniest shit I have ever seen live. Okay, I'm back. I think. Um, okay. I think I I'm back. Anyway. You. You're back. You can't. Oh. Your, your webcam is just fucked right now. Yeah. Oh shit. Um. <laughs> oh, we're back. <laughs> Yeah, it happens. Anyway, um, I can't remember if I asked you about the trios. Does anyone want to add anything about the trios, man? No, I don't really have anything to say. All right, uh, Dustin Rhodes, Dustin Rhodes promo backstage, and basically they confirmed to us that Samoa Joe is going to be able to compete tonight and have his match with Dustin Rhodes. And Dustin Rhodes cut a passionate promo about grit and balls mm-hmm. and things of that nature. You know, a real man's man promo. <laughs> so yeah, shout out Justin Rhodes. Uh Okada versus a jobber. Uh Okada comes out nonchalantly, just you know, beating bums up, you know. <laughs> it's what he does. He's, he's cool, I can watch yeah. him, you know. Um and then after the match he accepts Pac's challenge for a match at Dynasty. Pac comes out to the top of the ramp and he kind of paces and then he thinks, fuck it, I'm coming down to the ring. And he comes down to the ring as he's about to get into the ring. He's attacked by the EVP Young mm-hmm. Bucks. And they're beating him up in the ring. And the crowd is making very minimal noise. And at one point starts to chant CM Punk. Um, kind of awkward. And it's kind of, I think, again, it's kind of more hangover like the FTR segment where the crowd don't quite know how to treat them. <laughs> you know what I mean? So on top of the fact that it was already a dead crowd. Uh, they do a they do a spot angle where Okada hits Pack in the head with a chair, and um, yeah, they're standing tall, and uh, that was the end of the segment, really. So yeah, yeah man, Pack got basically the thing to take away in terms of dynasty build is Okada's accepted Pack's challenge, and they mm-hmm. beat the shit out of Pack, man. Um, weird vibe during this segment, wasn't it, Charlie, yeah. from the crowd? Weird. It was, it was, I, I thought the segment was good for like the way they executed it and that, but the crowd had no idea how to react and I really hope this doesn't continue. Like, I don't think it will bleed over into future weeks. I think different crowd, different towns, it'll be fine. It was just a weird atmosphere tonight. It was kind of unfortunate because they could have gotten some real heat with this because Pac's gotten so much like good faith from the um crowd since he's like come back again. So they could have gotten something really good out of this, but is what it is. It happens sometimes. But I'm excited for the match. Pack and Okada, that should be interesting. Yeah, man. I, I hope Okada can really kill it, man, because uh, if we're being brutally honest, you know, he hasn't had... That Eddie match. But yeah, he, he hasn't had a good match since signing for AEW. Like, yeah, like yeah. The, tri- the trio stuff with um, the books, like, yeah, it was fun because he's just getting over his character, but like, that's all they were doing. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, they weren't having like a banger or a good match because that's just not what the objective was. 
Yeah. The Eddie Kingston match just did not click, you know, and that was obviously a big opportunity for him to be like, here I am. Do you know what I mean? Because each girl card is on AEW done. You know what I mean? And it was super unfortunate the way that just was kind of meh. And uh, obviously now he's just beat a jobber. And so the AEW audience, if you unless you've been tapped into New Japan, which you know a lot of that audience is, so mm-hmm. you, you, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't think it was a crime for you to think, you know, what's the fuss been about? <laughs> you know what I mean? So um, I think. Really depend- Go on. And I, I don't necessarily disagree with anything you just said, but I think with a talent like Okada, who's being presented the way that he is, like the only the only miss in him not having good match, yeah, not a great match yet, because I did like the Eddie match, but it wasn't it wasn't a fucking it wasn't four did like four really? and a half or anything like that. <laughs> it was a good TV match. It was a good TV title match, bro. Uh, fucking uh, carry on, bro. It's a TV title match, but uh. Yeah, so, like, that one didn't... But, like, you throw him in there with a nigga like Pac, bro. Like, you're expecting to see some real shit. And I think as long as they deliver there, then, we're done, like, everything's good. Like, everything up until this point is is all good with Okada. But then if, if that's somehow a miss, watch. I don't think it will be. Like, I don't think it has a chance of being a miss. But if that's somehow a miss, then it's fair to, like, look at that and then look at the rest of his TV usage and be like, all right, what's the... Uh, What's going on here? That's what I'm saying. That, that is kind of what I was saying. No, it's like, I hope this is good because so far we haven't got that Okada match since he's signed. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I think it can be. I think it probably will be. But I'm definitely hoping Pac uh, is the one where he has his like, big arrival, you know? Um but yeah, I agree. I think I think the character stuff that they've been doing, the way they're presenting him, yeah, the suits, the way he's been pulling up his sports cars and shit, like all that's really cool. Um, yes. So yeah, I just hope his, he, his I just facial hope expressions he, in the ring yeah. and shit. That mm-hmm. shit's all dope. But yeah, man, I just hope it like packs a punch. Obviously, starting with the pack match, and bro, I won't be no give him a fucking match next week. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like he could. There is. There's yeah. so many wrestlers that he could just wrestle next week and just have a banger with. <laughs> like, um, so yeah. Uh, all right. Next up, we have a champagne toast with Tony Storm and Thunder Rosa. Tony Storm is like, yeah, let's get the glasses out, the champagne out. They're about to toast on the stage, and then Tony just attacks Thunder Rosa. It's all a setup. Hits. I think she hits her with a glass. And uh, yeah, yeah Thunder Rose is basically like kind of, kind of laid out. Then Diana Peraza comes out to kind of save her and make sure she's good. As she's checking on her, Thunder Rose shoves her away. So Diana just ditches her. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm hoping this leads. I hope I'm hoping this somehow leads to Diana heel turn. Um, yeah. Because yeah, I think I think she can. I think she's a, a productive part of the women's roster anyway in her current form, but. I think as a heel, she can really, uh, we can really start cooking. Yeah, you know, but yeah. Tony Storm, Champagne Toast, Dale. You wish you was there. Oh no, and I'm done with Thomas Tony. Honestly, <laughs> I don't really have to say about this. I can't, um, I can't really do this anymore, bro. Monty warned me in the beginning, and I was it's like, tough. ah, nah. You're just a, you're just, you're just an angry yellow Brit, bro. Who what thinks are you man? Says- like you just yeah, like I always say, you don't know what's going on. This is that this is that real shit. Uh, no, bro. No, 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 no. I'm done. I'm done. No, 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 no. Um, but yeah, Charlie, champagne toast, your kind of thing. It was just kind of whatever. I wasn't really offended by it, but I didn't need to see it either. It's it happened. Yeah. It happened. Mariah May came out after that. Yeah, Mariah May came out, all business. Tony Storm, of course, old theme and gear and everything. I think Tony, did Tony Storm give her a kiss on the cheek? Or... Yeah, she did. There's been a lot of kissing lately involving Mariah May. It's quite, it's quite alarming. Uh, but yeah, Tony Storm, <laughs> Tony Storm tried to give her some champagne, but Mariah was like, Mariah was like you know, I've got a match, so chill. Yeah. Um, and yeah, her match was a match with Anna Jay and... You know, we we've been critical of Anna Anna Jay when she's gone out there and stunk it up and 
I thought this match was pretty fine, to be honest. Um, yeah. Just whatever, you know. It's just TV. TV. It was alright. Yeah, it's just kind of whatever. I get it. Alright, yeah. Yeah, Mariah May's got some, performance. Yeah, Mariah May got some really nice chops in. You know, she's got she's she's good at bringing the physicality and stuff, and I think that matters so much, especially when you've got like a dead crowd. Like last night, like yeah, the crowd was like tough throughout this, but it could have even been even worse, bro. <laughs> if not, Ryan May didn't bring at least a little bit of physicality to it. Um, well, yeah. Anyone got anything to add on the match itself? Because next up is like one of the funniest things I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> uh, not too much no. to say about the match. Let's go to the next thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. After the match, yeah, they um, Mariah May's won the match, of course, because you know she's gonna be energy at this point in her career, and um, they obviously it's like you know she's happy she's won the match, and it's like who who comes out, and it is Mina Shirakawa of Stardom, a hit of music, and mm. the crowd. I don't like the it's like the crowd was like. Anti noise, like the crowd wasn't just silent. Like, if there was it's anything, crazy, was there though, anything oh, wrong, because it's their third appearance on AW slash ROH television, it's got like two <laughs> good, she's got no. two good reactions, just and then like later. this one, which is like to call it an anti pop, would be like would be an insult to anti pops, bro. Like, it, it that sounded like, like nobody you. was in there. Like, was, I don't understand crazy. how they got more silent. Like it was, it was very incredible. Hard. It was inc- it was like they don't they don't have Star World in fucking in West Virginia, bro. You got we gotta stay out of the country. It was like because I was trying to say I don't know how they managed to get because like, the match was like, kind of quiet anyway, and the atmosphere wasn't exactly like they were fucking roaring and stuff like before the hit of music, but the hit of music and it somehow just went even more silent. Probably because people are thinking, like, like, "Oh, who's that?" But, Even with AEW crowds, if they don't know who the person is, when they see like a name and like a brand that they recognize, they, they, they have been they'll give them a the yeah. like, oh, yeah. they'll make, like, woo, them. Nothing. <laughs> like, nothing. literally nothing. And so it, it's brutal, man. Because it's actually been, like, I'm, again, I, I say, I always preface this when we talk about Joshi and Joshi wrestlers, but it's like, I'm not a stardom expert, but I do loosely keep yeah. up to date with who that, and mm. I know who, like, the top stars, and I'm very, very well aware of who Mina is. So yeah. it's like, Mina, not, really not that long ago, she was just kind of like, Almost like a diva in the sense yeah. of like, oh yeah, she's just like pretty and she plays on a sexuality and she's just kind yeah. of like she's not much of a wrestler. But like over twenty twenty three, I think she was like, was she was she like our most improved? She was like one of our most improved. I'm sure she got nominated because she just all of us. She does, definitely of us got nominated. Like, I don't remember who won. Well, no, I was going to say all of a sudden, it weren't all of a sudden, but like over the course of like a year or so, like she really started working on her in ring. She got really more physical and she just got became a lot better in ring and started having good matches. And people started getting behind her as a wrestler and not just this hot girl, you know. And um, yeah, man, she got she got really hot. She's got her own faction. She got she won a she won a uh. What did she win, bro? She won. What did she win? She won a tournament or title. Basically, she was like, you know, she won them pushed out. She won. She won. She won the secondary belt. Yeah, there you go. And then yeah, she won. Yeah, she won the white. She belt. was having. She won yeah. the second. She won the secondary belt. Um, the white belt. Um, she had a. She had a yeah. good run with it, and then uh, it was. She, she was having a good run, but it was really short. Russell Tam. Everybody thought she was gonna go over, but uh, well, no, nobody thought she was gonna fuck. Her. Well. It didn't end well. It just, it just didn't end well. It didn't end well. But yeah, man. Look, my boy will be just like, she's someone that's like made a lot of progress and clearly worked very hard to like become like a player to the point where she's getting booked in America and stuff now. Do you know what I mean? She's one of the stardom wrestlers that people in the US want to see. And, you know, she's had some like good matches under her belt that people can check out and stuff like that. And, you know, none of that mattered last night. <laughs> like, you just... I like Mina as well. Obviously, I've just put her over a lot and I actually do yeah. like and I think it's actually like, really cool to see like that she's gone from the point she was at to where she's at now. But, uh, yeah, it was deflating to see her come out to like, 
complete anti pop last night. Like, the yeah. classic anti pop, like just nothing. It was. It was. I feel for her, and she comes out, and it was like fucking because of the anti pop as well, and because of like. Regardless of how you feel about the Triple H comment that Osprey said, like that coming after the all in footage and then doing like shooting on the other promotions booker and then doing this, like Mina coming out to no park and coming out and doing yeah. like, and, like kissing and kissing and drinking champagne with Mariah in the middle of the ring. I was like, bro, did Russo book this show? Like, what is happening? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Oh man, Vince Russo did. He started. He started whispering in my ear all of a sudden at this part of the show. I didn't know what was going on. Um, it was. Very. Yeah, it, it, it gets even. It gets even weirder. It gets even weirder. That Mercedes interview. Oh, bro, I have no idea what's going on. Oh anymore. no, that was that was beast. What she was saying, it was like wasn't necessarily bad or whatever, but it was just such the way they're shooting some of these interviews at the moment. This fucking face zoom thing they're doing. What the fuck is this production? It's so jarring. Like, I hate it. It's, it's like more uh, than right now. I didn't hate it, but the production is just. Listen, I love Mercedes, bro, but they got to do something here, mate. They've got to, they've got to figure something out because it's like. Mercedes, Mercedes promo style isn't something where you can just be like, all right, we're going to do a live promo with Mercedes or all right, we're going to do a sit down or an interview with Renee with Mercedes because like, as much as I love Mercedes, she's not someone that you can just like, all right, here's a segment, make it great. Like only certain great TV characters and wrestlers can just be like, here's a live promo and a wrestler, make it great or... Here's an interview with Renee. Make it really good. Like only certain wrestlers can do that. And Mercedes, as good as she is as a talent in ring and just as a star and as a presence on the show, that has never been Mercedes' game ever, never, ever, 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 ever. Um, and you can tell, like her, all her promos have like a WWE gloss to them in terms of them feeling kind of like artificial. Like you don't really, except for that first promo that she cut, which was less of a promo, more of an introduction, a big business. Like all of her promos feel like, so she's not a real person. Do you know what I mean? It's like, and that's one of AEW's strong points in terms of promos, especially like early on when the difference was as stark as it was. It was like, you know, these WWE scripted promos where they sound like robots and blah, blah, blah. But in AEW, you hear people speak in their authentic voice and they can kind of talk about whatever and they can kind of freely talk. And it's like, you don't get that with Mercedes because her promo style has that WWE glaze to it, which is fine, which is, I think it's more on AEW to think of creative ways to use Mercedes so you're not just setting her up to just kind of, yeah. Here's a here's a live promo. Make it great. You so you gotta get creative, man. So Mercedes, yeah, she's an all time talent. You can absolutely make a very strong argument. She's the greatest women's wrestler to ever step foot in America. You know, mm-hmm. uh, to ever live. You can even Mercedes one of those special ones that you can compare to the Joshi's, bro. Like she's that special. Yeah. Um. But she has strengths and weaknesses. You know, and W and AEW need to play into her strengths and. Yes hide her weaknesses and i'm not saying they're they're not i'm not saying they're fully exposing her weaknesses or anything like that but they're definitely not playing to her strengths and they're not being creative enough in playing to her strengths like instead of just doing live promos or interview promos or backstage things with renee or whatever the fuck they do um that just kind of gives her the ball to kind of just cut a Mercedes promo, which is only going to be yeah. so, so, you know what I mean? It's only ever going to be so good. Um, you need to you need to creatively come up with good, enticing, interesting segments where you can just kind of plug Mercedes in to come in, look cool, have aura, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And then make her excited to see her next week instead of just kind of like throwing her out there with a mic and being like, all right, Mercedes, cook. Because that's just not what Mercedes does. Yeah. Uh, Ayo, I'm all going crazy. Oh! Uh, not many foul points, bro. Uh, yeah, this is not, like, obviously, 
Mercedes just cutting promo week after week. That's not her strong point. That's not what made her one of the greatest of all time. Um, that's not what made her all these millions of dollars that AEW's uh, paying her. Like her star power was definitely part of it, but like not her, not the fucking promos. Like you you pay, you pay Mercedes to wrestle, right? Like um, like if like if like imagine like if these Osprey promos was fucking shit, bro. It's like well you're paying them to wrestle anyway. They just niggas lucked up and he's a generational TV character as well. But um, like I I don't know, bro. Like I'm just like her run will start like her run will start with me when she starts wrestling. I'm not worried until then. Yeah. Uh, I just, I wish they would. I don't know. It's I don't know. Just, just, need to, just loosen up a little bit, bro. Just loosen up on the promos a little bit. It's, it's, it's tough, isn't it? Like you said, so you don't want to judge a Ryan too harshly until she read it. Because it's not her, bro. It's yeah. like her coming out and doing a promo, which is whatever, like, I'm not like, oh, as if Mercedes, Mercedes is a fraud. Like, no, because no, Mercedes, no, 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 no. Mercedes is doing... It's not her strength. Do you know what I mean? It's like, but if you give her a match, bro, against fucking Nyla Rose, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. nothing against Nyla Rose. Love Nyla Rose. I think she's an awesome personality outside of the ring as well. But, you know, she's not exactly someone who you, who you like, oh, go to bangers. Do you know what I mean? And yeah. she's far she's far from bad as well. Like, she's a... She's no, not a fan, fan, do you know what I mean? Yeah, she's, she's a fan, but like, Mercedes could do some shit with that lady. You know, yeah. <laughs> like, the um, way she would bump for that for that fucking power bomb, bro. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So, as it, nothing new, nothing breaking being said on this part already. But you know, the money, the money on the side is in her wrestling. But it's just if she isn't cleared, which we pretty much as close to knowing as, except for being fully confirmed. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's like if you know that's kind of the crutch you've been dealt to deal with and maneuver around and book around then there's there's gotta be better ways but like I said at the top of the show so you could have done like an injury angle or something you know but my god there's none of that and she hasn't been involved in like one good angle or anything yet that's what I was like, that's what I was gonna bring that up as well I was like bro I'm not judging Mercedes on like these promos and stuff because not like the content it's like oh my like Look at the look at the content of these promos. Like if only Mercedes could just, you know, cut them a little bit more natural or whatever. And then all the fucking content sucks too, bro. So yeah. it doesn't I don't I don't think I don't think her run is like being bosh or whatever. Like I'm just saying my opinion on how to like optimize everything that's going on right now instead of oh yeah, this is it's good to see Mercedes another week. We could be like, yo, this is this is great shit that we're watching. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be nice if it was just great, you know, um, mm-hmm. because it can be, and she she will be, regardless yeah. of how good we think it is. Like, she will be an important player for AEW in that women's division for the next for the yes. foreseeable. So it's vitally important that they get it right, you know. Um, so yeah, Mercedes, amazing talent. Just there's got to be some more juice to get out of her at the moment, even if she can't wrestle. Um, yeah. All right. But yeah, she did it. She did an interview with Alex Marvez and the lights go out and she's attacked by Julia Hart and it sounded pretty suspect. <laughs> well, we don't even know if it was Julia that attacked her. That's the assumption. But oh, yeah. Just... I, I, do write, I, just, I, I wrote down assumably Julia, but, you know, it could it very well no. could not have been, you know. I feel like the lights going out is like... Yeah. Lots going out is to make us think it's Julia, but it's probably yeah. like Stat or someone. Is everybody you know against I mean? Stat or Turn Heel? No. No, I'm not against it. Like the, the more the further we get on, like I'm very for it at this yeah. point. Well I, I I heard that it was one or the other. With her and Willow. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, no. Yeah. Uh I yeah. can so, I can confirm that, bro. AEW was um considering saying, turning so. Willow and uh Thank God somebody, um, somebody that, you know, people know and love put their fucking foot down. It was like, absolutely not. We're, we're yeah. not turning Willow. Absolutely fucking not. Thank God. Yeah, I love Willow. Like I said, if uh, 100, like Willow, turning Willow heels, like, 
I have to use this twice in the show, but that's no. that's promotional malpractice, right? Bro, Willow is the type of baby face that like should be a lifelong baby face, bro. It's like you don't you yeah. don't turn Willow heel. Like you never oh what if Willow, what if you could have got that Willow heel run? Maybe in fucking eight years from now, bro. Not fucking yeah, not now, no. not anytime soon. But yeah, interesting noises in the dark with Mercedes. Um it was bees. Interesting. It's interesting. <laughs> I can't believe they must have knew when they put it out how some people would react to it, because there's no way yeah. that, that made there's no way that made it through edit and production without saying. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, you're you're so it. mad. You're so mad that a woman, a powerful woman, was able to express herself. <laughs> she was literally beat up on the floor, and you're making it sound like it was this empowering. <laughs> 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 um, exactly, bro. She was doing her fucking thing. I think that's what you said when I DM'd you to yeah, be honest. Yeah, but he would DM'd me. He was like, yo, come on, bro. It's 3 a.m. for me. This is crazy. And I was like, yo, Willow, I mean, Mercedes doing her thing. She's doing her thing. <laughs> but yeah, that was, uh, that was funny. It popped a lot of people, but yeah. Shout out Mercedes. I, I love Mercedes, man. She's fucking awesome. I love Mercedes. She's great. Um, Sly. All right, couple super chats. Um, Adrian, two dollars. Appreciate you. <laughs> Dan Howes and t-shirts. Malakai gear scam. Hashtag noticing. Hey man, those punk guys. Talk oh, about come it. On. <laughs> those punk guys. Now you found uh, five dollars. Appreciate. What's the best thing and worst thing that could come to mind when you look at current AEW? Um, the best thing. The best thing to me is the. Is the Automatic success of Will Ospreay. I think that's yeah. that's great. That's that's very encouraging. The worst thing to me, um, that gets time, Jericho. Um, yeah. I mean, if you're looking at it as just like individuals, that's I think they're pretty very solid answers. Uh, I think the best thing about AEW is, um, the best thing about AEW at the moment. It's tough, isn't it? Because they're so like they're so up and down. So like, two mm. weeks ago, everyone was like, "We're so back," and now it's like it's mm-hmm. so over again. Do you know what I mean? Because last week, last week's Dynamite wasn't good. Last night's Dynamite wasn't particularly great either, and obviously it had the controversy as well. Um, when I think about the best things in AEW, I think it's just simply the talent, just simply yeah. the talent. And I think the worst thing about AEW is when the creative kind of gets in their way when it's supposed to be helping them and when AEW mm. gets in their own way by being too online and shit that we spoke about at length tonight, you know? Because they do get in their own way with yeah. this shit. So as AO said, they did not need to react the way that they did. They could have literally just... They could have been the adults about it. Let's see him Punk tell his side of the story on MMA. Our, of course, he's going to fucking embellish a little bit of it and he's going to lie a little bit and he's going to make things sound worse than what they are to make himself like, of course he's going to do that he's a fucking professional wrestler and it's just what people naturally do when they tell their sort of a story AEW could have just ignored it put on a great show on AEW Dynamite last week didn't need a rah-rah promo from Matrix it just made them look fucking gotten to you know what I mean they didn't need to do all that Tony didn't need to announce fucking that they're showing the footage even when they showed the footage, they couldn't even think of anything to properly incorporate the footage into the angle that they were yeah. doing. They just kind of played it in the middle. Like, it was just... They get in their own way with the fucking internet shit, well, it's... To quote CM Punk's words to Jack Perry. <laughs> you know? Why, 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 you, why you gotta play into this internet bullshit, man? You know? Why, why you gotta... Why you gotta do this shit, you know? Great wrestlers, and they've got they've got the ingredients to be like. They've already they've already had like an all time run of TV show, yeah. you know they've they've done it and they can keep doing it, and they've had all all time runs of pay per views as well, you know. But they get in their own way a lot of the time, and it's very frustrating. And I don't think they, I don't think the creative be perfect. Like I have to stop if Tony can't delete Twitter, they'll be perfect. Like there's a lot of problems with the but it's like problems that just kind of come because he's new to booking and shit. Do you know what I mean? Um. Anyway, 
New Japan guard, 499. Osprey is the one. I feel like Takeshi is right up with him as the one to. Listen, in terms of like a prototype, if you could build him in a lab, like, yeah. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, I see, do you know what I mean? In terms of like two plug in and play characters, their stats, attributes, like, yeah, I see. You know what I mean? Takeshi might even edge him. Do you know what I mean? But yeah. Osprey is the one because of the resume and goodwill he's built throughout his career yeah. and now that connection coming to fruition with the way that he's being treated by the AEW fan base and stuff like that. He like he just he's just different. Takesh just still you know, he he's not he's not early in his career, but he's still quite young. Osprey's young though, man. He's like fucking twenty nine thirty, so mm-hmm. I've got some great talents there, man. Great, great, great sure. talent. Just, just Got to keep doing right, bomb. It's like again to go back to the other super chat. It's like Takeshi, bro. Like you really had something to the point where like Kenny wanted to, Kenny Kenny and Cole thought it was the time to do the match and that with him. You know what I mean? Yeah. They did the big heel turn and everything. He beats Kenny twice. Do you know what I mean? And it's like you you need to capitalize on that shit. That shit ain't just gonna carry him forever. Like you need to capitalize him. If you're going to do those matches and have him beat Kenny, you need to be ready for after that to capitalise and make him like the top heel in the entire company. Do you know what I mean? Like You need to do yeah. that and you need to solidify that. Otherwise, you go back 10 steps like they are now where he's still awesome, but he's not where he was after he just pinned Kenny, Kenny Omega in the middle of the ring, you know? So... Yeah. They, uh, sometimes they set themselves up for open goals and don't score so, you know, Will Chisholm, uh, five dollars. In my sick head, I need to see Mercedes in the Tony Storm verse and Mercedes selling it. So that's because no, that's what, no, you know what, Will? I'll give you that one because, like, you prefaced it with in my sick head. <laughs> that, is, that is very, that is very sick. So, yeah. Uh, again, it's sad that she didn't get a pop from the AEW fans, but you're telling me that NXT fans knew who Julia was really. Bro, they popped for her, so it's like, yeah. Well, yeah. Stardom <laughs> sold out a show in the US. Like, Bro, it's, it's people like, who it's, were there that weekend knew who you was. It's the thing. The thing is, right? Like, are there Stardom fans in the crowd? Yeah, absolutely. But all those people that you see is like when fucking when the homie wrestle ops is like, oh, Julia seen seen wearing a WWE pin. Like and the, the tweet gets fucking fifteen thousand likes. Like, those are real people that they buy tickets, they go to shows and shit. So like they know, like even if they don't know who the fuck she is, bro, they like they know this is somebody they're supposed to be excited <laughs> they, for. They, they, they know and know. Yeah. Like they've even seen the they've seen the know, online they know discourse. Like, this, to pretend, you know? Yeah, yeah, they know this is someone we're supposed to pop for. Like they, oh Julia, yeah, I heard she's the Josh that's coming in. It's supposed to be really good. Let's, let's pop. Like it's not. It, it, it's WrestleMania weekend, not fucking. West Virginia, you know what I mean? Hmm. Yeah. WrestleMania is the most online crowd. Yes, Will. Um, mm-hmm. Yes, Will. To answer your question, I I do think and it's two fans knew who Julia was, but I don't think they would know who Mina was. Because like, yeah, like, 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 I mentioned, walking, like, like, Julia, like, Julia's been like viral on Twitter in terms of WWE fans like the past few months yeah. now. Like, a lot of their fans online, whether it's Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, whatever it is, like they know who Julia is, even if it's just seeing pictures of her, and never seen them wrestle a match. Um, yeah. So yeah, and she has an awesome look. So it's like res- WWE fans like see a picture of Julia, like she's coming in, and they're like, "Whoa!" <laughs> like, yeah, like, she, yeah, well, she looks like that. Say no more. I'm I'm on board. <laughs> like AW like, fans do it too, bro. Like, they hear that somebody's coming to AW, they're like. They're like, oh, I'm excited for this person. It's just like, well, how many people really, like, no no offense to her at all, but it's just an example. How many people was really like, Megan Bain, Megan Bain, Megan Bain, Megan Bain, until she was linked to AEW? And then it was like, yeah. yes, I love her. We need, let's get her in. Oh, I need her to do this. I need her to do that. Uh, uh, so it's, just, it's just wrestling fans. Yeah. It definitely yeah. is. Yeah. Uh, Will Chisholm, four dollars again. I thought that was the point to bring in that written from WWE. Right? No, I thought that was the point to bring in that writer from WWE because Mercedes wanted her. Is Tony using any ideas from her? 
I mean, like, obviously Jennifer Peppermann is, like, heavily involved in AEW Creative and not even just Mercedes now, like, but it, she, she was never brought in just for Mercedes. Tony Khan obviously likes her ideas and wants to run the team team. But, um, I don't, I, I can't, I, I don't know the specifics. Obviously, we only have, like, loose inside info about AEW's, like, creative and shit. Like, I couldn't tell you exactly who produced that segment last night, for example. I could maybe ask. Oh, you've been- even if, even if she is doing like everything, like everybody's everybody's job here gets easier once Mercedes starts wrestling. Like it's gonna be easier to write a promo segment for her. It's gonna be easier to have her in feuds and stuff. Like look at what they have her do. Like forget about the lines that she said. Like just look at like the storyline she's in. She's like loosely connected to this Willow, Stat, and House of Black and Julia Hart feud and Sky Blue like. Kind of, and she's not really doing anything else. Like, what the fuck is she supposed to be talking about, bro? Like, it's just, they're not giving the writers the best shit to talk about. Yeah, so like, know, her... it's, it's the choice yeah. as well, like, Julia and Sky aren't the people who I'm thinking. Yeah. Yeah, if we put her with Mercedes, we're going to make some instant magic. So it's, just, it's just not. And even if you're thinking, he's like, all right, let's get Mercedes working with a couple young talents to give them, like, a rub. And whatnot, and it's like that isn't the feud you do with <laughs> a top star that you've just signed. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like it's just not, it's just not what you do, is it? It's like when Cody came in, he wrestled Seth. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. When like Will Ospreay just came in, like his first pay per view match is fucking Brian. No, yeah. No, he wrestled Takeshi. No, Takeshi. But like. Still, you but know like even mean? yeah, what? even if that's not like you're giving them AEW's version of Seth, it's still that's somebody who you know could go blow for blow for him and put on an unbelievable yeah. match that everybody's gonna talk about, and that's exactly what yeah. happened. And it's like Mercedes comes in and she's wrestling down, even though she's not actually wrestling yet. <laughs> like, yeah, she's like she's, she's working like, down in car position and like. Uh, work rate ability, so it's just like extremely down. Though it's not even. Like, yeah, it's not, it's not even like it's a step, step down. And we're gonna work our way to like yeah, this is like Cody coming into WWE. Obviously, comes in pretty much immediate as top baby face. It's like he's still wrestling down to Seth, but it's like Seth is at yeah. least a top guy, a star, he just and, a, and presented as a. So it's like even if even if as much as I said I didn't want it to happen, like Mercedes comes in and wrestles Tony Storm and takes the belt off her immediately, and she's immediately in the Tony verse. So like, yeah, I would have bitched and moaned about her being in Tony verse, but it's like at least she's coming in and she's top of the car again. Yeah, belt. like she's and even if, even if you, like no belt involved, like like I, none of us are fucking fans, but like if you gave if you brought her in and gave her Britt Baker immediately, bro, it's just like well you know it's a star like she's wrestling down ability wise, yeah. but. That's a good comparison for like an AEW version of Seth Rollins. So like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Book the match, do it. And, and they've got they've got the women for it, bro. Like, so the like yeah. the Willow match will be good. Do you know what I mean? But it's like that's not who she's like opposing all the time. And like she's opposing like Sky Julia. Got this weird thing with Willow at the moment. Where it's like, will she? Won't she? Um. It's just, it's just, it's just weird, man. It's just weird. So when you think, when you look at other like top top stars being signed throughout the course of history, it's weird to just. I don't want to call them mid card because like Julia holds a title. You know what I mean? But like yeah. in terms of like standing of like you know the resumes and stuff that they've put together in their careers, it's like Julia and Scott not very high on that list. You know what I mean? Like they're no Jamie Hayter, they're no Sheeta, they're no Tony Storm, they're no not even Thunder Rosa, Britt Baker. Like they're, they're just not. You know. Yeah. Um, where did that Riho interaction go? Like, do you know what I mean? I know, I know Riho exactly isn't. I know, you no, know, yeah, she was first AEW World Champion, and oh yeah, she beat WWE in that one ratings war fucking two years ago or whatever. But like, <laughs> you're so fucking mad. You're I'm not, so just, mad. No, you're so my point mad. is, I like Riho a lot, bro. I think she's awesome and everything. But I, th- I just think that sometimes people in 2024 still talk about her like she's like this big star in AEW when like it's pretty clear that she's not. Even if you love her and think she's awesome, which I do think she's awesome, but 
let's be honest, she like she shows up on TV for like two weeks every fucking three months. Or, do you know what I mean? So it's like yeah. she's not, she's just not one of their top stars, main players in the division. She just isn't. Um, she doesn't come. Well, when she is you, she doesn't do jobs all the time and shit like that. But you know what I mean? Like she's just not one of their top people. She just isn't. Um, you know, I, I, you do have the women for it. Stat, you know, obviously as well. But, you know, obviously that will tie into the Willow thing when we get to it. It's just... Oh, it's just... It's just fucking get it moving. Um, Andy, 100 rupees. This WWE boom is over and Triple H peaked as a booker. The last two years were built around Cody chasing Reigns. Not sure what sustains it. Nothing's as strong. I mean... That sounds like you've jumped ahead quite a lot. I mean, obviously, it's a possibility that hey man, now that Cody Rhodes has finished the story, that he could like peter out. But to just come on, I think I think, we're, I think we're claiming too early victory right now, Andy. Um, yeah, it's a it's a long fight ahead. No, even, yo, look, <laughs> even, when, when Triple H officially falls the fuck off, WWE fans aren't going to admit it for like a year anyway, bro. So like, it's a long mm-hmm. road ahead. We gotta we, come on. I'm fighting there with you, brother, but we can't claim victory just yet. Yeah, it's, uh, come on. It's, uh, obviously, I obviously I don't agree because like, I enjoyed the video at the moment, enjoyed Mania and that, and we'll be watching it continue. Well, continuing to watch it going forward, but you know, sometimes I'm just like, what? we can't we can't claim victory until they're not doing. 10k every fucking week. Yeah, if you if you're like the big if you're like the biggest hater, like yeah, I can understand you being kind of like okay. Now they've done the big thing. It's like now what? Huh? Now what are you gonna do, Triple H? It's like I understand you. I understand like that, but it's like until he actually shits the bed and WWE goes wank. Do you know what I mean? Then it's not hmm. hot, and they're not selling out every week. Then that's when you, we can drop these super chats. But until then, you you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> don't, worry, don't worry, Andy. We're gonna get there. We're gonna One get day, there. And then, bro. Book, Booker's having hot runs is not something that lasts forever. You know, it just look at fucking Whatever. look at Gato. Look at right Tony. Look at Tony. <laughs> look, look at Tony. <laughs> look at Gato. Him. That's a really good example. Gato. Uh, Jada wasn't know, exactly great when NXT, he was NXT Triple H. Number, bro, like, you know, yeah. it's um. Bro, people used to people used to like post those Shawn Michaels. I know NXT stars like their weird little fucking fan base or whatever, but like people used to post those Shawn Michaels Booker of the Year memes like do. every fucking week, they bro. Still, like they still do. NXT still do. NXT was hitting like nine hundred K and shit when Becky was down there. Everybody was fucking loving NXT and shit. Now you got you got other WWE fans say NXT fucking sucks, bro. That wasn't happening a few months That's ago. I don't remember how long ago it was. Sean... But... One of my favorite things about Sean as a booker, which is like funny, it's not necessarily one of the best things about him as a booker, is like it's um Leo Rush said it when fucking you guys interviewed when um yeah when we interviewed him, it's like he just he isn't shook like he will try he will just do shit he will see if shit works he will give talent chances try different things. Like he, he's very he's brave like the complete in that opposite sense. of uh, Hunter on the main roster, because like Hunter's just like I'm not gonna do anything interesting really. Like it's just gonna be a bunch of stuff that makes sense, and hopefully y'all like it. <laughs> yeah, true. It's yeah. Uh, Triple H is a lot steadier, definitely a lot steadier. But like he, he kind of had like yeah, of course he didn't maybe didn't have to to the extent he is, but he he does have to be a lot steadier. Where Sean has the space to just like try shit as well, so it's just always the piece. So. Like he could just like do a Jada Parker fucking push for like two weeks to see if it will work. You know, yeah, like, he can just do shit like that. <laughs> yeah, like you can just do that. Um, I uh. I mean, main event with Dustin Rhodes and Samoa Joe from Dynamite was very good. But we are so deep into the podcast. I'm, I doubt we're going to like fucking break it down there for me. But it was very good. It was as expected. Good That's what I mean. Dustin Rhodes well, you know. gets, busted, gets busted open. Hell of a blade job. You know, just fucked up in the middle of the ring. Samoa Joe. Great heel whenever he needs to be. Dustin Rhodes is such a good baby face. In peril when he needs to be. It's just like it's just pretty mm-hmm. two pros doing that thing, you know, you know. Just I love this shit, Charlotte, you know. 
Yeah. I really enjoyed the match. Yeah. It's good. It's a good main event. You know. Strong main event for Dynamite after yes. a weird show, you know. Yeah. Um, after a very weird show. Uh AO it was only like eight minutes, but yeah. you know, Justin Rhodes and Mother Joe. Well, I know uh, a nice angle after. I know I know I've had my words about Dustin Rhodes in the past, but you know, I'm not a I'm not a Dustin Rhodes hater. I just feel like the um the output at times doesn't fit the uh his need to be on TV. Much much like the Pentagon sense, right? It's just like you, you know, he's not there anymore, bro. But uh yeah, you went out there, he had a great showing last night. Uh Samoa Joe did his thing, Dustin Rhodes did their thing, the blood was great. Um I I liked I liked the uh I like the running angle at the end, bro. I feel like we're doing. I think we're doing good business with the with the world title right now. It's it's a shame that that's not the uh, the talking points coming out of Dynamite, and we spent yeah. fucking ninety minutes on a Dynamite review talking about some shitty CCTV footage oh, and not what they got cooking up on the top of the card. <laughs> yeah, it took it took a lot away from Swerve. It's. Uh... I don't know if I mentioned it earlier. This is really such a long show, but I don't know if I said it at the start of this show when we was backstage, but it's like you're watching you're watching AEW Dynamite and it starts with Swerve, hot angle, puts Joe for a table, you know, fuck yeah, you know, that's the next world champ, you know, this is hot stuff, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And then all the shit that happens in between, whether it's the footage, whether it's mean and getting no pop whether it's the Osprey promo, as good as it was, was obviously a big distraction as well, whether it was the FTR promo, whatever it was, you know. By the time Swerve comes out at the end of the show, you know, oh shit, yeah, Swerve's yeah. here. He probably should have been featured on the show a bit heavier, you know. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it's, uh, you know, distractions taken away. It's a word we've used a lot regarding some of the things on this show, things taken away from the good things in AEW, because there is plenty of them. It's just, they just get in their own way, man. And Tony's a poster at heart, you know, and it's just, it's... God bless. Uh, but yeah, a couple of super chats. I'm going to wrap this up. Will cheers on $5. As long as the final boss is on board, WWE will sadly do close to 10K. Fred, are we doing it without him? Yeah. But yeah, I agree. Obviously, if you got Rock on your shows, which obviously isn't going to be for a minute, unless he keeps surprising us, um, then you know, yeah, obviously, if you got Rock on your shows, you're going to draw at least fucking ten k. Dwayne Rock Johnson, you know what I mean? But the company was doing that anyway without him. He's just like he just sent them even more over the edge, bro. Like it's crazy. You know? Yeah. Everything lined up really nice for WWE over the past few months. You know. Um, yeah. Uh, Bluey, 100 rupees. When Triple H finds big matches, he's going to hold them off until they feel as big as possible, but he's at the expense of weekly TV. Um, hmm, hmm, hmm. When Triple H finds big matches, uh, oh, I don't know, man. I think he treats every few differently because, like, if you look at Rhea, for example, you can tell that he doesn't want to take the belt off her because how would he book her without it, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, there's like the different elements, the different reasons why he holds back on different big matches or sort of thing. Uh, some of them he's gone to a bit quicker, but it's just I don't know, man. He likes to spread out his TV. You might have noticed as well. He don't like doing too many things at the same time. You know, like yeah. in terms of like things that get really hot and catch fire. So like he's not gonna do Gunther and Gable at the same time. He's doing like Bianca and Jade or something like do you know what I mean? Like something that catches fire and gets really hot. Like he, he can't he likes to rotate them and spread them out throughout his year. This is something that you can tell from watching that we've heard as well. So um yeah. I'm not just talking out my ass. So that, that's what you that's that's your little you know, on top of the things that AO and us have mentioned, uh for my EW there's your little scoop of the pod. And ask the Sultan two dollars. Screw book, screw punk, free Palestine. I mean, fair. Oh, fair. Yeah. <laughs> well, on well, not box, box, but you know, anything else? No, well, yeah, no, nah, I, I like the box, man. 
<laughs> it's just past me to pretend that I don't. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Willie 199, AEW really got one of the best in the world working timeless toner. Who, who's that? Thunder Rosa? <clears throat> One of the best in the world, welcome to Well, I guess so. I love Thunder Rosa. I, but, I, I yeah. like Thunder Rosa, but I, it's more of like an aura character, like presence kind of thing. Not, I don't, I don't see her working like this is one of the best in the world. Oh, Azumi! Oh, yeah. Oh, fucking, fucking Azumi! Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They got the collision yeah. match. I was like, I thought you were talking about the fucking title for you, my bad. <laughs> Zoom you one of the best in the world. Yeah, I think so. I haven't, I haven't seen enough of her like recently. I think like, really I, like, I watched some. I watched a lot of her like last year. Well, I say a lot. I, just, I, I use that word sparingly, but um, Looks you know, I haven't, I haven't like what I, I couldn't say I've watched five Azumi matches from twenty twenty four. You know, so I'd be unfair to comment. She's very good though. She's very fucking young. She's like twenty one. Yeah, she's like twenty one. Uh, She's like a ten year vet though. But anyway, we'll choose them five dollars because we know Triple H is saving Rhea versus Bianca at Mania for you. Yeah, you know what though? The thing is is that like Rhea versus Bianca like is a mania match. So it's like <laughs> Yeah. You know? It's like, I, I don't it's I don't tried. I don't I, it it is a mania match. Um I don't get why you can't just have Rhea wrestle, bro. Like Yeah, it's just big she will, big though. and imposing and stuff, but I don't get why she can't go ten minutes. Twice a month. I think she will. I think she'll start to wrestle a bit more in this stretch of her reign when she gets going again. Obviously, I'm assuming that she'll kind of been given a little break after Mania. I know she was on like, TV, but in terms of wrestling, I think, yeah. Like she's one, she's, she's she's one of the best they got, just... about a bell, bro. And they're just like, oh, well, you know, we have to protect her aura and just like book squash matches. And like, even the, even the, what's it called? The pay per view matches she gets are like, it's not inspired booking, brother. Just, I don't I don't get it. Need to run back that Natty Matt draw, I think. Uh, well, you know. <laughs> Listen, she had a really good match with Natty, I'm wrong. Um, I saw, I saw Natty was working on uh, NXT last yeah, week, worked, like a couple weeks ago. Who did, she, who did she wrestle? She worked Roxanne. How was she it? She worked Roxanne on Tuesday. On... Yeah, she worked Roxanne on Tuesday. It was pretty good. It just didn't get enough time because they did an angle with Lola Voice at the end. But um, yeah, that that is good. That is good for the PC. No, that 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 is a good hand, bro. I have my phone because it's just yeah. like yeah. If, if if you're like a call, she, I'll never forget her getting three and a half stars out of Cora Jade, bro. No. I genuinely did not like that match, bro. I tuned in for that. I thought it sucked, bro. But but my two's giving me huge pop, well huge. Worked, it's because it just disguised Cora Jade. Well, it just disguised her so well, you know. Anyway, we're talking about Natty and Cora Jade matches. Um, on, going into fucking hour shit. four and shit. Let's get the fuck out. Yeah. <laughs> Charlie's dying on us. It's just, <laughs> just going to pass out in a minute. Uh, you know, but this has been a weird episode because it's been a weird week of... It's been a weird 20... I was going to say a weird week, but, you know, just made a week. We had a good time and that. Super card of honor, you know. Peace. Anyway, um, it was a weird episode of Dynamite, so this has been a weird episode of Recipes Podcast because we've gone three hours, 38 minutes. So, weird in that sense. But who else is going to talk about <laughs> backstage oh, silent dude. footage for 90 minutes? In the middle <laughs> of the <laughs> Where else are you going to get this high-quality content? You know, just... So with that, if you haven't subscribed already, <laughs> please do <laughs> please like do the video. Like, like the video the too. Video. If you haven't liked the video yet, please please do like the video. We appreciate all the super chats. Uh, and also, yes, if you're absolutely. one of our, uh, if you're watching this on, what do you even call it? On demand or what? <laughs> on replay? <laughs> on Quite replay. Sure. And, uh, yeah, make sure you're liking the videos as well. That all helps. Yes. And. Uh, yeah, man. Charlie, you want to plug your feature before we wrap up, wrap up, wrap up? Yeah, probably should. Um, had a feature go out yesterday. It was about where the story with the Bucks and that might go after the All-In footage came out. 
Um, I won't spoil it. I kind of did earlier because I talked about it briefly, but go read it. I think it was pretty good. It got a good reaction on Twitter. So. And almost most importantly, it's still on track. Because uh, you is. wrote it, you know I mean? like you wrote it the other day. We posted it yesterday before Dynamite. Mm-hmm. And obviously, there was a chance that you could have just gone all out the window yesterday. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> how I ended it. I was just like, it could have just been a funny, like a little fun theory to write about, but it's on track at the moment. So, but yeah, man. Uh, like I said, we're still on track with that one. Charlie, Charlie could be on to a big winner there. I think mm-hmm. there is a lot of validity to her speculation. Um, all right, so go check out our features. We had a lot of mania ones dropping, obviously, on our mania's been in gone, but some of them are really cool. To I also dropped the mania anyway. Yeah, even Charlie did a mania feature, so go check those out, crazy. and of course. Check out the most recent one from Charlie. Um, I think we've got some more to drop this week, so keep an eye out for it. Obviously, tomorrow we'll do Wrestling Observer newsletter coverage on the Twitter page, as we always do. Um, I might do a podcast, depending on what I'm doing, man. I've got some stuff to do in the day tomorrow, so we'll see. So keep an eye on the page. Like and subscribe. Thanks for the Super Chats. Thanks for watching. Peace.